Can everyone see the screen? Yes. Okay. All right, we're going to start off with the fact that um, most of the chiefs have taken the test and have passed in flying colors. Um, so we will be issuing out United Washington um, Indigenous Lawyer Certificates. And basically, it's real simple. Just continue studying and mastering these sciences. And of course, you know, we'll continue having classes in order to put any, you know, piece of the puzzle together or the dots together. All right. All right, so we know that every record has been destroyed or falsified, every book rewritten, every picture has been repainted, every statue and street building has been renamed, every date has been altered, and the process is continuing day by day and minute by minute. It has not stopped. We have to keep this in mind every time that we go into history, because it is his story. So this is why we verify with our her I teach heritage. All right. We've heard the story about Alexandria being burnt to the ground. And I'm talking about Alexandria due to the fact that there's some things in which that you know we have a lot of individuals in which that claim to be historians, but from what I see, the historians only in the aspect, not in our whole story, our whole heritage and culture. This is a problem that I'm seeing um, so from so many scholars or so many so-called historians and scholars. So Alexandria, allegedly the Great Library of Alexandria. Um, I'm just going to read the first part, first sentence. Hey. 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 I'm just going to read this first paragraph. So, okay, mute myself out. Curiously, the library and the museum never a mention together only one or the other. Caesar speaks of the fire, but not the library. Strabo, the museum, but not the fire. Seneca, the fire and loss of books, but not the library. Plurcher, or Plurcheric, the library, but not the books. Dio, the fire and the library. Flores, the fire but not the library or its books. Happyian, neither the fire, library, or books, only the battle. As the account of the fire is repeated, so too are its consequences even more disastrous. Um, in the first century AD, Seneca mentions the loss of 40,000 books in the second century. Aulus, Gilius, almost 700,000 in the third century, which many historians go by that count, deals the loss of books and the greatest numbers and excellence in the fourth century. Amenanis, Amenanis, the burning of a priceless library and 700,000 books. And in the 5th century, Orosius, 400,000 books and the destruction of that marvelous monument of literary activity of our ancestors who had gathered together 
so many great works of brilliant geniuses. So, a lot of information as we just read here, a lot of this information that we just read is contradictory. And when you have a lot of contradictory, a lot of contradictions in his story, what we find is that it's the making of myths of the Library of Alexandria. So the Great Library of Alexandria may have never experienced any one cataclysmic destruction which brought Alexandria's intellectual legacy to its knees. Instead, a succession of building and possibly many libraries or many branches of one took damage from centuries of turmoil. Aside, these physical destructions were social, political, religious um, shifts that changed the intellectual landscape of Egypt. At no point was the literary heritage of the Great Library completely erased. We will say that part again. At no point was the literary heritage of the Great Library completely erased. In fact, the Vatican has 200,000 books, manuscripts, documents, tablets, etc. in the basement. In the basement. All right? The great works of the classical literature continue to be studied in Alexandria throughout late antiquity, and the city gradually declined in importance as intellectual capital has more to do with the rise um, of others, um, of course, who came into um, that time. But guess where we do find 700,000, the same amounts in which that was allegedly burnt in... <laughs> Alexandria, we find it with the people in Mali at Timbuktu University. 700,000 ancient African books survive to University of Mali. So, real simple, the information once, that once existed in Alexandria, Egypt, made its way into Timbuktu. Of course, the Albion wouldn't believe that. That's that's impossible. My God, the niggas have it. <laughs> but here in present day Ethiopia, about two hundred fifty thousand old manuscripts from the Timbuktu Library survived. Now, what are the manuscripts from Timbuktu doing in Ethiopia? Hmm. Because they're Kushites, same people. Also, as the southern Egyptian site of Kosir Ibrim, thousands of manuscript documents from the medieval Sudanese Empire of the Makuria writing in, in at least eight different languages has been dug out. In the western African city of Chichu, Titi, Walati, Odan, Kano, and Agades, thousands of more ancient manuscripts have survived similarity, similarly. And then it says approximately one million manuscripts have since managed to survive from the northern edges of Guinea and Ghana to the shores of the Mediterranean against the real and present danger posed by fires, insects, and plundering. National Geographics also predicts 700,000 manuscripts in the city of Timbuktu alone have survived. So we are talking about as you see here, over 2 million manuscripts, documents, books that have survived in Africa from a place that they claim 
had no written language in oral and only oral tradition, just like they have done to the Negroes here in North America, South America, Central and uh, Jordan Islands. All of this is a lie. We'll show you the languages in which that we spoke, because guess what? We spoke the same language all around the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kimmy, West Africa. PhD and what he says here. He goes on to say, we have discussed several times that one of the most volatile battles in academia is established the original inhabitants of ancient Kemet. We have no problem saying emphatically and without reservation that they were black Africans. They migrated up from the Nile River to the Great Lake region, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and the birthplace of humanity. In, Ab in Abyssinia, Abyssinia, as referenced in spiritual texts, it must also be mentioned that several European and Arab scholars disagree. Well, that's them. Who give a fuck? In the late de <laughs> decade or so, there have been some new research to come on the scene. Of course it has. Maybe someone is reading those 700,000 documents. They may have evolved from ancient texts or traditions or reaction to European and Arab scholars stating that humans in West Africa has absolutely nothing to do with ancient, ancient Kemet or Egypt. Well, we're going to find that's a goddamn lie. That is an argument we will revisit in the not too distant future. But for now, it's time to look at some new emerging research related to Kemet and West Africa. What we now know is that there was a great West African cultural groups that traces their origin to ancient Kemet. Let's look at these groups, because you heard, you heard of all of these. Nations such as Ashante, Ghana, Yoruba, Nigeria, Benin, Ghana, Togo, Wolof, Senegal, Gambia, and Mauritania, the Dinka, Remember the name Dinka, who lives in the Sudan, who are known now as the Nubians. The Dogon for Mali. Oh, and the Mandinka. See, the Dinka and the Mandinka are the same people, as well as the Dogon. In fact, the Mandinka and the Dogon are the same people, and they and as they migrated from out of Sudan. Abyssinia, which is Ethiopia and Egypt, Kemet. Thousands of years ago, the Dogon and the Mandinka split, but they came from the Dinka people from out of the Sudan, which is now in the Sudan, who were originally in Kemet. They were the original Kemites, the Kushites, as we would say. But the Mandinka, Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, um, Burkina, um, Faso, uh, Mali, all right, Coteo, um, Ivory, and then the Zulu also was in Egypt, South Africa, and many others. Dr. Shank, um, um, Shek Anta Diop, as they say, or as we pronounce it, Shek Anta Diop, from Senegal, um, Africa's greatest multi scientist is credited with pioneering this moderate research. So it's not that new because it's in Dr. Um, Shekhan Diop's information of the African origin of civilization. It's in his book. <laughs> the other book of his is Civilization on Bar um, Barbarism, an authentic anthropological or anthrop um, anthropology uh, look at um, the origin of that, um, the African origin of civilization. So we know that the Dogons was in Egypt. And, uh, matter of fact, we can look at here and correlate the information. Let's go down to the last sentence of the paragraph or the second paragraph. 
The Dogon and ancient Egyptians have much in common, including the same set of complex calendars. They both identified their domain by upper and lower land and shares the same dualistic um, interpretation of their symbols. Now, this is from Lord Stratton from his book. All right, he, he wrote several books on the Dogons. Y'all can look that up. I've spoken about them before. So it says facts about the Dogon tribe. Okay, we're going to come down. Number two, many of the Dogon words are Egyptian in Hebrew. Wow. Mm. You had to say that one more time. Many of the Dogon words are Egyptian and Hebrew. Okay. Now, continue on. Benjamin Banneker. Because many believe that Benjamin Banneker is Benjamin Banneker, but we know Benjamin Banneker is actually Ben Bay Emmanuel Muali, Chief Justice. According to the information provided to us by CM Bay. Chief Justice Ben Bay Emmanuel, right? Ben Bay Emmanuel Muali. So what does it say about Muali? Well, it says Benjamin Banneker was a born free. He was a free Negro, a Moor. In Maryland, in November of 1731, 1731, he was born free. I thought this was the time where all the Negroes were supposed to be in slavery. It says three months before George Washington's birth. It's not known precisely where he got his knowledge of mathematics and astronomy from, but some historians speculate that his maternal grandfather was a member of the Dogon tribe from Mali. But he was born free during the time of slavery. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> And the Dogon tribe from Mali are reputed to have long traditions of studying astronomy. Whatever he learned it, though, it certainly um, squat his, uh, his interest, and that combined with some schooling from a local Quaker farmer gave him a solid grounding for geeky pursuits. I mean, you know, he's a, he's a He's the first African American geek. <laughs> this is what is trying to be said here. But we know that the Quakers also was involved in some other shit too, because we know the Quakers were the Rosicrucians. Hence Moorish science. And the same invention that they gave to Benjamin Franklin or actually the inventions of Benjamin Banneker, and which we'll see right here. His first known major geeky activity was when he was at 21, age 21, reputed, uh, reportedly built a clock out of wood using a borrowed pocket watch as his only guide. The story for which evidence is scanty, but it seems likely that there is some truth to it, goes that the clock kept working until after Benjamin Banneker's death. Shit, matter of fact, shit, Big Ben is still working to this day. And that's in England. And he built that shit. <laughs> so he built structures in England, in London? He built structures in London, which is in England, which is in the UK, United Kingdom. Well, actually, Ben, Big Ben, as they still call the clock today, 
in London, England, is known as Ben Bay, I mean Big Bay, Big Bay, or Big Bay, whatever that, Ben Bay, yeah, whatever. Close enough. But we know that. Ali. Yes. You talking about a boy that did that? Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, we got to put well, you right up on the screen for the hell. Well, we can't, we, we can't bring that on the news, brother. Well, well, it, it's the truth. <laughs> and, 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 and then not only did he build the clock in London, but this is why George Washington later on gets him to build Washington, D.C., because he was already a world traveler because he was a free Moor in Maryland. Okay? He was free. So, they didn't have passports at that time. Okay? So he was able to go wherever the hell he wanted to go. Alright? And we speculate that he had to have gone to Egypt and seen the great works there in Egypt because he comes back and George Washington give him the commission to build Washington, D.C., which is based on Egyptian, Kemetic, Temerian organization, structures, and architecture. We see that as a, we see that I mean, that's just a proof in case when we look at the documents um, or the designs of Washington, D.C. Um, there's a book called The Potomac, um, The Ancient Secrets of the Potomac. Um, that was written by um, Anthony um, Broder, Anthony T. Broder. Right, read by Anthony T. Broder. He also wrote uh, 16 essays, if I'm not mistaken, 21 essays, 16 to 21 essays. I can't remember which one there. But um, he got some good ones in there about melanin. He also wrote uh, The African Origin of Civilization. Um, is like, to me, uh, even more in-depth detail about what Sheikh Antidiop, what Sheikh Antidiop said, um, he himself um, explains in more detail, right, in his book. So get get any and all Anthony T. Broder's books. Matter of fact, he got some fantastic DVDs in which he goes into metaphysical information. So he's following the same path in which that. Um, Bobby, myself, Phil Valentine, and others are doing now with the metaphysics. I um, mean, he himself, who is a historian who been under Dr. Ben, John Henry Clark, and the rest of them, historians, he's going metaphysical. Um, Ashwa Kwesi, he goes metaphysical, all right? Um, he was one of the first ones in order to tell us the science behind uh, what is meant in the Genesis about the eye, when you um, about the land called pineal land, or pineal or pineal land, um, where the angel and Jacob wrestled, and his name was changed to Israel, which means to ascend to God. Um, so all of these things are shown to us over and over again um, by these great scholars. All right, so this is what needs to be shown over and over again by our great scholars, um, Moorish scholars, not to separate or divide, but just to show that we have to teach the truth so that everybody else can come online with what is really going on. Because I see many historians, uh, and I give a good example, um, you know, they push Africa, but don't push what's going on historically or heritage-wise here in the Americas. And this is causing a great divide among the so-called Moors. 
and those who want to be called Moors and those who don't want to be called Moors and just simply African because they don't even like the word African American. Um, so, you know, these things are having a lot of, uh, I guess you can say, problems in which that needs to be solved. So, um, we're going to do our best to solve them. All right, so um, let me see here. Come on down, son. All right, so all that to be said is this. Benjamin Banneker Ben Bay Mu Ali allegedly comes from the bloodline of the Dogon, the Mandinka people. All right. So here we are, we're looking at the back of the two dollar bill. All right. Just keep that in mind as we get to it. So the Declaration of Independence, known as a declaration, is clearly proof of who the slaves really were and are. Those who were branded Negroes, colored, and blacks were enslaved, but were not and are not the people seeking freedom from the British, right? We wasn't seeking freedom from the British. However, since the Moroccans, Moors, indentured servants and slaves, the Albion, that is, remember the word Slavic as in Yugoslavia or Yugoslavic is the true origin of the word slave. It is derived from the word Slovenia and Slovak. This re refers to the European members of the Serbo um, Croatian group of Slavic peoples. However, contemporary sociologists have layered the native identity with the social, political, cognitive, or connate of um, the connotive meanings. All right, that's what we have to realize too. Thus, the said Albion Europeans were the first slaves in America. Now, many can't believe this, but I'm getting ready to show you about a dozen books in which that verifies this. They too were in conflict with British. Those who declared this proclamation, Declaration of Independence, was under the rule of King George III, a Moor, and they were seeking release from the British, brutish Moors, that is, who reluctantly wanted to keep them Albion's in slavery, servitude, and did not want to agree to free them. They considered them a rebellious group based on the facts many were released from the British jails and could not be held in trust or trusted positions. Well, shit, we can see that even today in politics. All right? Can't trust it. <laughs> right? Right? That's old school right there. That's that's public enemy. Right? So Moors were not in agreement with each other. That's obvious. That's that ain't nothing new. But still are responsible for civilization, the principle of civilization. In the spirit of the same, the Moors accepted the Declaration of Independence. Over crime, man. Did you just call them enema? Yeah, you're public anymore. You know. <laughs> you're a lawyer, you're a public anymore. Yeah, it's all the public anymore. <laughs> well, y'all don't know where that's from. That's 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 the old school right there. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all go back and watch on, um, yeah, y'all go back and watch on Friday. Y'all find out that um, Pop said that in um in the scene. I mean, <laughs> uh, Mr. Bang, 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 man himself. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yes. Uh, I was yesterday. I was talking to a sister who asked me why I was wearing my feds. Uh huh. And uh, she, she thought I was a Shriner. Right. And I told her, No, I'm not a Shriner. I'm a Moor. Right. She said, uh, You wearing a black feds? I said, Yeah. Well, because today is Saturday. So right. why is that because it's Saturday? I said, because it's Saturn. Right. Which is the dark 
energies from the planet. And she's like, wow. She said, well, that a fraternity? I said, no, that's not a fraternity. That's us. You are more. So I'm more. What, what? That's the one I, I, I told her that any dark skinned person that is tied to land, which also what more means, is the tendency to land, history, and culture of the earth. And she said, oh. And she kept repeating herself, more, more, more. And she's a sister. I, it, it baffles me that how many of our people don't heard, I haven't heard of the term more. I'm like, wow. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm going to mute myself out. I'm going to let you get through finish dropping that science, brother. Oh, yeah. Check this out. I talked to a Yugoslav the other day. He was the male. Uh-huh. Man. He, broke the, he broke the conversation down to me while I was standing there waiting for the male. He was uh-huh. like, why do people not deal with their nationality? Oh, why are people why are people calling themselves uh color? I say whoa! I say yeah, I like you, man. And we can have this conversation while he's putting mail up. He's going in. He's like when he first got her. He said he got her in two thousand three. He said he was forty one at the time. He said somebody at the uh, at the office told him he did he didn't need to get a job. He could just uh they, they'll give him a check if he didn't work. And he was like, I don't, I don't see nothing. That's not good. He say, you know, in three years, me and my wife bought a house. He said, I just couldn't listen to that guy to tell me I didn't have to work. I could just get a check. I say, whoa, that's interesting. Yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he know who he we know. are. Yeah, he knows. Like, a lot of our people do. Ain't that something? He knew. Yeah. He he broke it down to me. I was waiting for that Delaware book uh, in the mail. You know, I always find uh, mailmen suspicious. You know, they know more about you than you know about yourself. Yeah. But, uh, you're going to slob. You're going to slob. Yeah, I just wonder why he would want to have that conversation with me while I was waiting, though. I don't know. The Delaware Moore book must have got him excited. What was it? Was it, did it look like it was a little peephole open there for, for somebody can uh, look at Okay. Not at all. Both of them, they, they was covered up. Okay. Yeah, because I had end up getting uh, the third uh, edition to uh, Sex and Race and the Delaware's Forgotten Folks. You know, I would think that. But it seems like, man, they they funny, man. I don't know if they know where the stuff coming from and to give them a, a description of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, he didn't know if that were, what box I was going to, you know, because he had all the mailboxes open. And, and he right. started having that conversation with me. I was like, yeah. And so we, we had a nice little 10-minute conversation. I was like, yeah, that's exactly right. I say, uh, a whole Yugoslav. I say, a whole slave over here talking. I say, oh, Slav. Mm-hmm. At least he know. Because, man, these, uh, these Hindus, man, mm-hmm. they, they were over here. They will not talk about it. Oh, no. So I, I'm amazed that you got them. Talk about it. That, that was on some of Yeah, I get a lot of them. I make a lot of them mad when I get to talk because, you know, they get they like to go, oh, only humans only been here 12,000 years. And I bust it down, and they be like, oh, oh, oh. And then they, then they almost want to get the prostrate, and I'll be like, I don't deal with that either. <laughs> <laughs> and that, we, 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 just, we just want what's ours, that's all. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I use the flow. All right, cool. These are the books I'm talking about. So here we have Don Jordan and Michael Welch, White Cargo, The Forgotten History of the British White Slaves in America. They were white, and they were slaves. Another book, this is by Michael Hoffman II, The Untold History of the Enslavement of Whites in Early America. Then you have Rita um, Kamatsu. This is the Irish slaves, slavery, indenture, and contract labor among Irish immigrants. Then you have white slavery, in the Barbary States. The Barbary States, well, hold up. The Barbers or the Berbers who are the Moors. <laughs> Charles Sumner. All right, let's, let's keep looking. What does Sumner say? He says, first published in 1853. Down Right, he was published. So 1853, you had to go back mm, 100 and so. And some odd years. 
to get a book to tell you what was really going on. So it says, the first published in 1853 by Charles Sumner, White Slavery in the Barbary States, outlined the history of the century in which Muslims enslaved Europeans and later Americans. Now, now so the Albion Americans, <laughs> okay? And what led to its halt? Some of the focuses on many Pacific instances of Europeans and Americans captured and sold at Muslim slave markets. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. No, this one. Do something. Right there. You see right there. All right, so right here it says the Barbary slave trade, reference to the slave markets that flourished on the Barbary coast of North Africa, which included the Ultima province of Algeria. Algeria. Um, Tunisia and Tripolini, oh shit, just Tripoli, and the uh, independent sultanate of Morocco. Now, hold up. So this is what we was talking about. So when I tell people that the Barbary, which are the Berbers, the Moors, the Ottoman, and it says of Morocco, these are all the same people. This is what is told to us right here. Between 1600 and the middle of the 18th century, province in North America, excuse me, Africa, was nominal, nominally under the Ultima, all right, Sustainary, um reignancy. But in reality, this was mostly autonomous. The new African slave market was part of the Arab slave trade. All right. The Barbary Coast European slaves were acquired by Barbary pirates who slave raised on ships and by raids on coastal towns, all right, from Italy to the Netherlands, as far as Iceland and east to the Mediterranean. God damn, we were damn enslaving the whole European country. The ultimate eastern Mediterranean was the scene of intense privacy, piracy. As late as the 18th century, piracy continued to be a consistent threat to maritime traffic in the Argenia. For centuries, large vessels of Mediterranean relies on Gali, um, Gali slaves supplied by, South, by North Africans. All right, so. And the Ottoman slave traders. So. What they call the Moroccan Empire. The Ottomans was part of the Moroccan Empire. They have to say, oh, it's just the Ottoman Empire. No, the Ottoman Empire was the Moroccan Empire. And we had them enslaved, as you've seen. In fact, we go further and you can see what we're talking about here. In the video, Moorish Paradigm by Brother Hakeem H.Y. Bay. Um, he's talking about a Nexus magazine. I have the same magazine. It's called the Nexus magazine, the history of banking. That's named the magazine. Um, article in the magazine. It was a human cry for the newspapers of the Northeast banking interest to execute the president of the Bank of the Confederate States of America in the South. Now, the reason why, because he was a Moor. For two years, the president of the South was kept in a dark, wet cell, cold cell in the side of the um, 
Earthening um, Fortress in Monroe, Louisiana. He was an ill and broken man when put there. He should have died. He was expected to die. When it was apparent that there was no way that ravaged and occupied South, which was ruled by blacks. Now, this, this is what the article says. Could ever revolt, he was released. Hmm. So the president of the Bank of, of the Confederate States of America in the South, all right, that's Confederate States of the South, that was Louisiana. It says that it was occupied, that's, the South was occupied by the blacks that ruled the South. So, this is part of the same Moorish Empire, same the same Ultima Empire, same as um, the various empires that we've been talking about. This this is the fact of the matter. Could not revolt, but was released. So they had to release him. Now, see, this is all correlated back to the barbarian cruelty and eyewitness account of the whites. Slavery under the see this when they come and tell you that the Barbary Wars, the Barbary Treaties, the Barbary, everything was about the Moors. All right, this is by Francis Brooke. So in this book that we just finished reading, the white slavery in the Barbary states. All right, they tell you that it was the Moors here. Then it says here Christian slaves. Muslim masters. White slavery in the Barbary Coast in Italy, 1500 to 1800. Then we got white slaves, African masters. American, Barbary, captivity, narrative. Then we got black masters. A f Look at this now. Here it is. A free family of color in the old south that's the same thing as we just read in the article of the history of banking but we was ruling the banking system at that time okay black slave owners free black slave masters in south carolina 1790 to 1860 larry croker coker all right, the Black Masters, a free family of colors in the Old South by Michael P. J Johnson. All right, and S. Jane, uh, Jane, do I see? Can't see it too well there because it's at the bottom. Okay, and James L. Roark. Now, so we know for a fact that the Black. So, and they was Moors, as we just finished reading. So here we go to the book, Asonomi, The Great Masonic Secret, Master Keys, by um, Michel uh, Talib uh, Mahfouz uh, El Bey. This is what is in the book. The reason why the Moors in the northern, excuse me, in the southern United States was brainwashed out of our Moorish nationality and into believing that we are the descendants of slaves purchased in Africa was in order for the Northern European plantation owners to, number one, get around the Moroccan treaty with America and England, which would not, which would not allow them to enslave Moors. As they keep doing to this very day, why they don't go to the Moroccan treaty of peace and friendship between the United States. Two, to take our land in the South. Three, enslave free Moors in the slave states under the Fugitive Slave Law Acts. Mm. Four, to take us from under the treaty signed by the American original inhabitants of the land, as I told you, 
This is why we, we went in last week about the Cherokee of the land shall be a and in the meantime, they were to be property, persons, and the way of life. Uh, let me see if I can see. Yeah, in the way of life. This is Louisiana Purchase. So the same thing that he's talking about is the same thing that we just talked about that was in Louisiana. So obviously, Louisiana was the capital of the South. Monroe, Louisiana was the capital of the South. Remember, Upper Egypt, Lower Egypt. New York was the capital for the North. Oh, now it's starting to come complain. Mississippi is Somali to the Nile River. And if you add the Missouri River onto it, it's actually longer than the Nile River in Africa. And I'm saying all this in order to show you that not only are there African roots, but it was not from the Albions bringing us over here. This is from the many, 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 many import and export that we've had with our African brothers and sisters, as we are indigenously from here. And indigenous just simply means that we are the first people that was on this landmass, as well as all of the land masses around the world, or all over the world. Here's another book. It's called Black Masters, A Side Light on Slavery. We have another one, Black Slaves, Indian Masters. See, that's the one that they tell you about. Well, the, well, the past slaves too. But here, it says, Slavery, Emancipation, and Citizenship in the Native American South. But hold up, who did we tell you that controlled the South, though? <laughs> the Moors controlled the South. So when they talk about black slaves and Indian masters, they're talking about really when blacks own other blacks. African blacks, that is. Native Moors, indigenous Moors, Aboriginal Moors owned from Africa. Were they treated the same way in which they were treated with the Albion? No. We was owning them because we was trying to stop the Albion from owning them. So we were on them and then released them. Don't believe me? We'll continue on. Here it comes. Charles Rivers edition or editors is Forgotten Slaves, the history of Native American slavery in the New World in the United States. So they'll tell you in one aspect that blacks had um that blacks were slaves, um Indians were the masters, and then they'll tell you at another time that the Indians were slaves. And the Albion were the master. But then you got to remember what we just finished talking about, that at one time, the Moors had the Albions as slaves. So slave switching going on in just damn 400 years. <laughs> and we'll explain that in a second. Let's look at this. From Calvin Dell Wilson's short 19-page book, Black Masters, first published in 1904, we learned that wealthy, free African Americans, as he calls them now, right? That's what they call them now. Everybody is a motherfucking African American. Bought and sold members of their own race, just as did the Southern white planters and the African Americans. And that African Americans, once slave and freed by the white master, became slave owners themselves. To judge from all that is known on the subject, we assume that only thing that prevent the great majority of colored people from buying and trading in one another was in addition to the law of some states. That lack of meaning 
the lack of means, according to Watson Magazine, 1913. The most singular and dramatic aspect of slavery in the United States was the occasional ownership of bondsmen, blacks. Historically, the fact was are obscure, little known, and difficult to trace. This is difficult to. <laughs> well, let's go up. Watson finds that there were about 6,200 colored slaveholders in the days of yore, and that these black masters owned some 18,000 slaves. Well, it looked like it wasn't hard to trace to me. <laughs> wasn't that hard to trace? There it is. God damn it, there it is. <laughs> So a large that, that's that's a pretty good amount. Eighteen thousand slaves owned by black men. But let me explain. Most of those slaves were not colored. Right? You will never teach history school school class. I know. <laughs> As you see, 6,000 of the 18,000, that would leave us 12,000. That means there was 12,000 other slaves in which that was not colored. So who could those other 12,000 slaves be? Oh, Lord. Don't get me started. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you missed anything, let's go on back up and you see what I'm talking about. Oh, there it is. White cargo. The forgotten history of the British white slaves in America. They was white and they were slaves. The untold history of the enslavement of whites in early America. The Irish slaves. Slavery, indentured, indentured and contract labor amongst the Irish immigrants. And white slaves in the Barbary States. <laughs> and that that explains to y'all who were the remaining twelve thousand some odd slaves, which they don't want to talk about, <laughs> and they keep trying to hide. Okay, so yeah, they were out beyond. Yeah, exactly. They was out beyond. Yes, they were. My God. <laughs> huh. There's also um, White Trash. Yes. The 400 year history written by Nancy Eisenberg. Uh oh. Oh, so Nancy revealed it on him. <laughs> oh, okay. So, all right. So, uh, so right here, it says, there was no historical people or civilization called Mayan or Omex. It's an assigned identity by a white scientist to revise history and separate lineages. Uh-oh. So yes, we call people um, Omex or whatever the case is. However, let's look at it. The origin of the name Maya is traced to Bartholomew Colon on Columbus' fourth voyage. The ancient indigenous name of the so-called Omec Mayan is Ish, or She. Pronounced She, or Total Ishu, as plural. All of the sciences, calendars, languages, writings, and pyramids in Mexico, which are the world's oldest, was created by the Omecs. That's true, as we told you that the Mayan told us this. Who are the total issue? The ish or she people, as depicted on the epigraphical um, stones of ancient um, um, Mexico, are an aboriginal race of black people who originated, well, of Moors, let's just put it as it is, who originated in Chiapas, Mexico, which is southern Mexico, came to the Yucatan. Uh, area and brought writing and advanced knowledge to the people known today in Mexico as Maya. According to the Yucatec, 
Mayans themselves in Dega de Lanta, Lanta, the Totol Shiu 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 um, gave civilization to the Yucatec Maya, who were the Totol issue subjects and servants. The Mongoloid Mayans later came um, created their own. Um, um, clan and in destined in dynasties from the knowledge given to them by the Shi people. All right, and I'm just saying that because they are the ones in which that comes up into the interior, who are the same people as we talk about, which are known as the Omex, which was not historical. That's just simply the Moors or Malians, um, as we have already proven that. The same Malians who are the Mandinkas, who are the Dogons, and which that they are now saying that Benjamin Banneker was related to, as we all are, to these same Dogons, Egyptians, Omex. All these are the same people. They just keep changing the freaking name to conceal the identity, just like on the movies. True story. However, we have to change the name in order to conceal the same thing. They're great concealers, but once you put all this information together, you see how unconcealed it really is. This is a letter from George Washington to Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, Sultan of Morocco. This is the letter that I show in which that it says, where was it sent? It wasn't sent to Africa. Where was it sent? City of New York, December the 1st, 1789. George Washington wasn't in New York at that time. How we know is because he's writing a letter to the Sultan of Morocco, who is in New York. So why is the Sultan of Morocco in the city of New York? Not the state of New York, in the city of New York. It says, great and magnanimous friend, since the date of time when the last Congress by their president addressed you, Imperial Majesty, the United States of America has taught proper, thought proper and to change their government and institute a new one agreeable to the Constitution of which I have the honor herewith to in case to enclose a copy. The time necessary employed in the odious task and the disarrangements occasions by so great through peaceful irresolution will apologize and account for your majesties not having received those regular advance marks of attention from the United States. Where's my money? Where is my money? <laughs> That's what this Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, Sultan of Morocco in New York City, was telling the so-called President of the United States. Where's my money? And what did... And what, and what did oh, man, I bet. Exactly. And what did... President Washington have to do. He had to say, apologies. We'll apologize. I apologize and account for your majesty's not having received those regularly advised marks of attention from the United States, which the friendship and magnanimity of your conduct towards them affords reason to expect. In other words, we're sorry we didn't get you your money, but we will try to do what we can. <laughs> the United States, having unanimously appointed me to supreme executive authority in this nation, now is New York. If Remember now, I was telling you all, that colonies are not the whole states. Colonies are not whole states. 
we are thinking that when they say North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, when they say um, Maryland, Virginia, Delaware, Roanoke Island, so forth, so on, that we're thinking of the whole state as we see geographically shown today. It's not. Colonies are nothing more than towns. That's it. The truth of the matter. This is why he's saying of his nation, but yet he's writing a letter to the Sultan who's in New York City. So actually it was not the whole of New York City because New York's supposed to be one of the so-called 13 states, remember? So New York City was attached to New York State. And if they ruled the whole state, then that would have included the city of New York. Obviously, they didn't because he's writing the Sultan of Muhammad, um, Ibn, um, Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Bey, the Sultan of Morocco, in New York City. The United States has unanimously appointed me to supreme executive authority in this nation. Oh, my God. <laughs> Your Majesty's letter of August the 17th, 1788, which has been re by reason of the dissolution of the late government. So they got rid of the earlier nation, which would have been the way, Confederacy. which by reason of the dissolution of the late government remained unanswered that has been delivered to me. I have also received the letters which your Imperial Majesty has been so kind as to write in favor of the United States. This is Remember, this is when we recognize the colonies, which they call it a nation, but it's a, those are colonies, not the whole states, towns in those states for which that they was part of. All right? And I'm just saying towns for the lack of a better term, but colonies, okay? Colonies are not whole states. I have also received a letter from which your imperial majesty have been so kind as to write in favor of the United States to the brochure of Tunis and Tripoli and I present to you the sincere acknowledgement and thanks of the United States for the important marks of your friendship for them. So they go some more marks. So you got to pay the damn um, brochure of Tunis and Tripoli too. Where my money at? <laughs> we greatly regret the hostile disposition of those regencies towards this nation. We have never injured them. It is not to be removed on terms of our power to comply with. Within our territories, there are no mines, whether of gold or silver, and this young nation just recovered from the waste and dissolution of a long war, have not as yet have time to acquire riches by agriculture and commerce, but our soil is bountiful and our people industrious, and we have reason to flatter ourselves that we shall gradually be become useful to our friends. And the more say, where my money at? <laughs> The encouragements which your majesty has been pleased generously to give to our commerce with your dominions. See, who had the dominions? We did. Who had the commerce? We did. The punctuality with which you have caused a treaty with us to be observed and the just and generous measures taken in the case of Captain Proctor 
make a deep impression on the United States and confirm their respect for and attach to your imperial majesty. So, the United States, all right, as you see, of America, the United States of America was attached to where? The Ottoman Empire, known as the Moroccan Empire, known as the Tartarian Empire, known as the Berber Empire, known as the Kushite Empire, known as the Songhai Malian Empire. All of it is the same people. In other words, us. <laughs> they was attached to our dominions. The punctuality in which that you have caused the treaty with us to be observed and the just and generous measures taken in case of Captain Proctor of the United States and confirm their respect for and attach to your imperial majesty. Impression on the United States and confirms their respect for attachment to. This is why it's called the United States of America. America. For the United States is attached to Morocco. Al Morocco. He just said it right there. The United States and confirm their respect for and attachment to your Imperial Majesty. Who's the Imperial Majesty? Ibn Abdullah Bey. Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Bey, and he was what? The Sultan of Morocco. So the United States is attached to Morocco. It says so. George Washington wrote it right there. It gives me great pleasure to have the opportunity of assuring your majesty that while I remain as the head of this nation, I shall not cease to promote, I, shall, I will not cease to promote every measure that may conduce to the friendship and harmony which so happily consists between your empire and them. See, as you just finished seeing, the United States wasn't an empire at that time period. They was beggars and and didn't have any money and couldn't even give the proper marks to the Sultan of Morocco, to the Bashars of Tunis and Tripoli. But had to write a letter stating, I know you recognize us, but we can't give you no money for the recognition. You know we know we owe you. That's what is being said. It gives I mean, me yes. Quick question: mm -hmm. are, is, are they still playing tribute to Morocco? Mm -hmm. Good question. I was I would think that not since nineteen fifty six with them um you know getting rid of the last consular court in Morocco which is in America. Yeah, hey, I was just asking because uh you know, I was you know Going, going, talking to them guys about the treaty. Mm -hmm. they, they all want to run over there to Morocco. I was like, why they ain't come get you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. like, you bigging them up so much. Why they ain't come get you? Right. Well, I can tell you, in 2009, when the last time that we went to the United Nations in New York. It was having an event. Um, Morocco was having an event, and we came through with our feathers on, and they came running up on us. Yeah.
Okay. They came running up on us. They was begging us to come to the events um, that they was going to be having at the United Nations that year. So we had a, um, a little group of ours to go to those events. I wasn't able to go. I mean, yeah, we was busy talking to the international lawyer about, um, about you know, what we needed to do as far as to become an official nation. You know what I'm saying? And to me, and to me uh, we shouldn't have to do any damn thing because um, we're the ones who recognize them based on this goddamn letter that we just read. So why in the hell would I need have to have recognition from them? Why would we need recognition from them? I'm trying to figure that one out. We don't. Good answer. Good answer. Exactly. No, shit for them. Good no. answer. <laughs> Another good answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it says here. All right, so it gives me great pleasure to have the opportunity to assure your majesty that while I remain as head of this nation, I shall not cease to promote every measure that may conduce to the friendship and harmony which so happily can subsist between your empire. So we know that the Sultan of Morocco, that Morocco was an empire, Moroccan empire, and they were talking about the United States of America, America, which is El Morocco, which is Morocco, is North, Central, South, and the adjoining islands. So that was our empire in them, which was nothing more than colonies. Yeah, so that's the definition in our morality. Right. Little towns, the little towns uh, of import and export that was on the river shores and on the sections of the oceans. This is really what their colonies correlate to. Some matter of fact, somebody read to me colony. Um Black Little Dictionary. What 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 does colony say? A land that is controlled by another country of foreign power. Okay. Uh, occupied uh by another foreign power and controlled by another foreign power. Oh, right. right, right. So America was the controlling branch, as we just finished reading here. And then, and now you read this letter. It's it's like um, really when you read this letter, it's, you know, you, you know when you tr- um, you know flattery is unbecoming. It, but, but, you know, this is a lot of flattery up in here, a lot of fluff, you know, by George Washington, who was probably, um, at this time period, that was Adam Weissoff, all right, the Bavarian Illuminati dude himself. But um, hold on, y'all, I'm going to come right back. I got I to gotta go to the bathroom. Hold on. Yeah, they call it a dependent political community consisting of a number of citizens of the same county have immigrated there from the people to another to remain subject to the mother country. Woohoo. That's right.
I'm missing a few books in my library. Every time we come to class, we just we gotta buy some more books, don't we? <laughs> yeah, man. I swear, man. <laughs> I said, "Oh, I gotta buy some more books. I gotta break it, gotta uh, break down, man." Oh, I six, man. I seen six of them I didn't have. I'm like, goodness gracious, look at this. Oh man. <laughs> but that Michael Hoffman said early. European slave in early, in early America. I don't have that one. Me either. Uh, I got white cargo. They were white before, uh, and they were slaves. I got the Barbary. Uh, I got that. Cruelty. Yeah, I got. I got those. I got most of them. Yeah. I got those, but I ain't got that in early America though. By Me Michael Hall. Yeah, it's like six uh, of them. Uh, I ain't buying no. I ain't buying no more books after Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> we gonna try, brother. We gonna I'm try. Punishment. I'm on punishment. Uh, on punishment. Oh, brother. Yeah. yeah, she told me. She said, "Don't you buy another book." <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks straight, I had books coming. She's like, "Don't uh, you buy another one?" <laughs> but this is end of the line. No. But right now. But right now. Oh, shit. I feel abandoned. I dropped her off at the airport this morning. Oh, oh they gone? Yeah, they left about five this morning. Dropped them off. Oh man, okay. By the time I uh when, when class over, that's when they land. Oh okay. So it'll be four o'clock somewhere at uh, East Coast time. Where they going? Okay. Florida. No, oh, okay. Yeah, they down there for to next Monday. I'm at home by myself, man. No. Yeah. Stay out of trouble. Oh, no doubt. A lot of, a lot of reading. I'm gonna catch up on all these I books. I don't like, brother. Ooh. Yeah. A lot of studying, research. Yeah. Yeah. It's quiet here. So I get it. You're right. I don't hear. I don't hear. No noise in that background, Orishas. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> normally, normally it's cool. It's just uh, she, you know, she went through surgery, so I had to uh, I had to kind of get everybody and they be running to me. I try to keep them away from her because the little girl, she she get wild. She got a big old head. She like to throw her head around and, and hit her mom in the stomach. I'm like, yeah, you can't do that. Exactly. Yeah, they'd be around me doing class, and I'd be like trying to keep the mute on. Right. Coloring books and video games, but uh, they seem to want my attention when I'm in class. So. Oh yeah. So we'll be finding out that this is just one of the letters out of two hundred letters. All right, this is just one letter out of two hundred letters. All right. If you want to get a good book, which that breaks down that information, I got that book. Oh yeah. For those that don't have it, get your hands on it. Name that book? Yeah, brother um, Fahim, this is um, Dooley's book. Oh. Okay. Moors oh, and Masonry. Okay, I got it. That's the name of it. Moors and Masonry. This is volume one. What's, what's, what's the author Moors? What's the author Moors? Oh, a um, Mosey um, Abdullah Bay. Or well, Abdullah Mosey Bay. We call him Dooley. Did you say Mosley? Here you go. Can you see his name right there? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay. Aileen, you got the other one, the Masonic Compass and Square? Yeah, I got that. He sent that to me. 
Mm -hmm. But in here, he shows you how we initiated the Masonic Europeans in order to hold on to our heritage. And this is why we have all these keys. And while all these keys are coming to the forefront, because they was once Masonically held back from us. But as Moors, we understand that there's no secrets. Okay? There's no secrets. And so, Dooley breaks down right here what he's saying. The imposters. <laughs> Who are these imposters? Who are they? Using Masonic code, Muslim terminology, and so forth and so on. And he shows in that book many, many uh, um, of the letters and treaties. He goes into some of the letters and treaties in the book. All right, so let me see here. This is what he says. Colham is also the author of several other books, including the Complete Book of Immigration, uh, Immigrants, excuse me, um, the Bristol Registry of Servants Sent to Foreign Plantations, 1654 to 1686, Immigrants from England to the American Colonies, 1773-1776, Immigrants in Chains, American wills and administration in the prerogative courts of Canterbury, 1610-1850. And children apprentice in America for Christ Hospital London, 1617-1778. All right, and he goes on with the list of books and titles. Matter of fact, most of the titles in which that um, I just finished showing y'all, he talks about in here. And he says, um, basically, in White Cargo, the forgotten history of the British white slaves of America, he says, they came as slaves. Vast human cargo transported on, tail, on tall British ships bound for the Americas. They were shipped by the hundreds of thousands and included men, women, and even the youngest of children. So this is how they got here by the hundreds of thousands. <laughs> but they lied about how we got here by the hundreds of thousands. <laughs> okay? <laughs> that's, that's what we do know. It says whenever they rebelled or even disobeyed in order, they was punished in the harshest ways. Slave owners would hang their human property by their hands and set their hands and feet on fire as a form of punishment. So as we see why um, the, um, the, the Willie Lynch book was really written, <laughs> they were buried alive and had their heads placed on pikes in the marketplace as a warning to other captives. We didn't treat them nice, y'all, goddammit. We didn't treat them nice. That's why we had to go through this shit. Okay? We didn't really need to go through all of the gory details, do we? We know all too well the atrocities. All right? Here it is. It says the Irish slave trade bought, um, began when James II sold 30,000 Irish prisoners and slaves to the New World. 30,000. His proclamation of 1625 re required Irish political prisoners to be sent overseas and sold to English settlers in the West Indies. By the mid-1600s, the Irish were the main slaves sold in Antigua and in Montserrat. 
at this time, 70% of the total population of uh, Montserrat was Irish slaves. Ireland quickly became the biggest source of human livestock for English merchants. The majority of the early slaves to the New World were actually white. Or as they were calling themselves that, right? That W-I-G-H-T. Exactly, W-I-G-H-T. Exactly. And credence. If they want to say they're Christians, then we talking about credence, okay? We know which words to use nowadays. We got this. That spell has been broken. That, that damn spell has been broken. Stupid and retarded. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's supposed to have been broken, y'all. So that's what we do know. All right, can the devil fool a Muslim? Not nowadays, yo. All right, that's that's what um, Father Sinners used to say. Now we can really say that. <clears throat> that shit is over. So right here. Um, all right, pirates called concierges from cities along the Berber, Barbary coast in North Africa, cities such as Tunis and Algiers were raided ships in the Mediterranean and in the um, Atlantic, as well as seaside villages to capture men, women, and children. The impact of these attacks was devastating. France, England, and Spain each lost thousands of ships. Thousands. We, 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 we've taken these ships by the thousands, y'all. And long stretches of the Spanish and Italian coast was almost completely abandoned by the inhabitants. At its peak, the destruction and the depopulation of some areas probably exceeded what European slavers would later inflict on the African interior. So we were going hard um, on them. Right? They, they, they wasn't getting it nicely. All right. So we here. I'll give you a good example. This is a good one. In the first half of the 1600s, Barbary Coast, um, um, concierge um, pirates from the Barbary coast of North Africa authorized by governments to attack the shipping of Christian countries raised all around the shore. Yeah, you want to come through? You got to I got $7, but I guarantee you I can use back you a book. All right, there we go. Get that out the way. All right, so right here. In the laden rigged types of ships in oars galleys, they grabbed ships and soldiers. Excuse me, ships, um, ships and sellers, and sold the sellers into slavery. This is what we used to do, y'all. Amorality record shows that during their time, the concierge plundered British shipping pretty much as at will, taking no fewer than 466 vessels between 1609 and 1616, and 27 more vessels from near. Plymouth in 1625. So if, they, if we were taking this much shit, how in the hell did they do slavery? <laughs> how, did they, the how did they do the transatlantic slave trade if the Moors was taking their goddamn ships? Stroke of a pen. It was a war. It had to be war. It had to be vampire. Then that. This is how you know they was lying. They did borders all here. <laughs> Lying. So it says this. <laughs> so we took we took no fewer than four hundred and sixty six vessels between sixteen oh nine and sixteen sixteen and twenty seven more from near Plymouth in sixteen twenty five. So when Malcolm and Martin said uh uh Plymouth Rock didn't land on us <laughs> on Plymouth Rock, 
Uh, what, how do they say that? We land on the right. Exactly. All right. And even more, it says, um, before um, Plymouth Rock was, we was here. So it says, as 1800th century historian Jacob Morgan puts it, this I take to be the time when the concierge went in their zenith. They was, they was in their zenith in the 1600s. So, once again, how could they have been doing the slave trade if we was taking their ships every time we seen them? We was taking it every time. What? Oh, wait, you on the water and you ain't giving no money? Where my money at? <laughs> Where my money? All right, so <laughs> this is what was going on, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So we know that they was lying. There's, there's no doubt about it nowadays. You know, um, you know, we let the we, we let the Afrocentric, you know, people um deal with with that information and they don't really have no answers when it comes to that. They they just simply repeat the same old old information um in which that keeps us in slavery. All right, as we would say. Um there's another good one here. I wanted to read this too. Let's see if I can get a good one. Ah. All right. So right here, it says the detailed answer. Okay, here it is. How did the Moroccan Empire fall? How did the European powers come into the world power and domination? Answer. The detailed answers of this of these questions are out of the scope of this author's research, but they are on this author's agenda to further research as this author plans to do extensive research into the naval state war records of the National Archives, as well as the Archives of Historical Society of Spain, Portugal, English, Scotland, Ireland, France, Netherlands, and Germany. All right? Moors and Masonry, Part 1, and Moors and Masonry, Part 2, all right? The federal government and the imperial divan restored to the Moors will provide the Moors with a roadmap to assist this author in this area of extensive research. Research into the war navels, admiralty, records of the naval archives, and archives of historical societies, all right, um, in Portugal, Spain, France, Netherlands, and England during the 1700s shall provide the public with sufficient information to answer the above questions. The chapter provides document, documentary evidence of the extensive diplomatic relations between the Moroccan Empire and the European powers from the 1500s to the 1800s. All right. After reading this chapter, the reader shall be able to see that there is a correlation between the rise of European world power and the domination and the defeat and the fall of Moroccan and Ultima Empire. Once again, the Ultima and the Moroccan Empire are one and the same. All right? So, um, Dooley goes on to say something phenomenal, though. Uh, let me find it. Um, boom, boom, boom. Okay. Scholars have been researched the history of the Moors in Spain, writes that the Moors was defeated in 1492. This evidence would clearly show that the Moors in power far beyond 1492. This claim of the Moors being defeated in 1492 supports the theme of European world conquest and, colonial, and colonialism. After reading this chapter, the readers will understand that the transatlantic slave trade story is the key to the European maintaining occupation and colonization of, of Moorish land. As a result of the trade Atlantic slave trade story, millions of the conquered and defeated Moors classified now as black, Negro, colored, and African American truly believe that their ancestors was transported on slave ships by the Portuguese, Spaniards, French, Dutch, and English between 1500s and 1800s. Today, the conquered and defeated Moors are not competent to claim their lost estate. All right? Uh, 
The Moroccan Empire, political, economic, and military power from the 1500 to 1800 extended beyond Spain. Morocco's political dominance during the aforementioned time period involved Portugal, France, Netherlands, which is Dutch, and English. The, Le the Moors has extensive diplomatic relationships with relations with France, the Netherlands, Dutch, and England during the 16th, 17th, and 18th century, which had involved those in European powers paying annual tributes to the Moroccan Empire for the protection of European ships. And when they didn't pay, we took their ships. This is what was going on. Therefore, they couldn't do no import and export of slaves. Negotiating through tribute treaties, the payment of ransom for the release of European captains, merchants, sellers, women, and children from Moorish captivity, the payment of tribute for the return of European ships that has been seized by the Moors. There it is. There it is. That's what we're talking about. We took their shit. Cause where my money? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Moors say, yo. We was like, where my money? <laughs> this is why one more, if you go and read the definition of Moors in the Black Slow Dictionary, one more is worth 100 bailiffs. Bailiffs are sheriffs. So that means when one more come into the courtroom, we control, we supposed to control that. And we are asking for our sheddings. What is sheddings? Tell you that in the Black Slow Dictionary. Sheddings is what? Sheddings is money. Where my money? Uh -huh. <laughs> that, that's that's what he's doing the court when yeah. we come on special appearance because we want our money. Exactly. And we send them, right, we want, we, do, we send them a special appearance and we send them a bill. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sheddings. Where my money? <laughs> <laughs> that's what we asking for. That's the only reason why I'm coming to court, is to get my money. Because somebody done claimed that they damn sued me. Right. And it ain't nobody up in here to verify it. <laughs> That's why they don't like that term more. Yeah, the DA yeah. can't verify it because he wasn't there to begin with. So anything that he says is white. Based yeah. on the rules of evidence, is inadmissible. Mm -hmm. That's what Here's so that. it's here saying, shut up! Where my money? That's right. That's all I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, Dooley goes in too. He don't think that he answered the question, but he actually did answer the question in the book. <laughs> okay, he answered. He actually did answer the question in the book. But um, this this is what he says. The conquered, defeated, subjugated, and denationalized Moors, classified now as black, Negro, colored, and African American in the United States Census Bureau, has been indoctrinated through social engineering, linguistics, which is spelling, it casts a spell on us, and geographical distortion to refer to the European colonies. To the geographical distortion to refer to the European colonies as. Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, Connecticut, Massachusetts Bay, Maryland, South Carolina, New Hampshire, Virginia, New York, North Carolina, Rhode Island, and the Provident um, plantations as named as various landmass. All right? Those above 13 English colonies had no acreage. Hope. Hold on, hold on. Here, here, here we go, goddammit. Here we go. It had no acreage, y'all. Miles, latitude, longitude, mountains, hills, rivers, lakes, bays, ocean, beaches, airways, roadways, or roads, or highways, etc. This is the aforementioned 13 English colonies are not real and actually are physical bodies of land. They are actually 
artificial entities. Uh oh. They are artificial entities that was created on paper only. That's why they don't have no jurisdiction. There you go, right there. <laughs> exactly. When one claims to live in, or to be born in, or to go to, or be in one of the European colonial and occupying body politics, one is unsuspectingly claiming to be an artificial corporate entity and not a flesh and blood breathing being. Oh, there it is. The European um, symbolographer has created legal jargon to maintain control of Moorish territorial territorial so, um, um, sovereignty and to continue the human trafficking of the conquered, defeated, subjugated, and denationalized Moors in their Moorish land. All right? So, he already answered the question. <laughs> he, he answered his own question. <laughs> That's it right there. All right? All of these land masses, as we heard, which was the 13 English colonies, really had no acreage, miles, latitude, longitude, mountains, hills, rivers, lakes, bays, oceans, beaches, airways, roads, highways, etc. For they are artificial. <laughs> For they are artificial and only exist on paper. All right? So, he explains that very well to me. All right? Because this verifies what we just finished reading. Right here, because it says that the United States is attached to the empire of Morocco, which is Al Morocco, which is the capital was New York City. That was that's why shit hip hop came out of New York City. That's why damn near everything came out of New York, and then it spreads through the rest of the country. It spreads throughout the rest of the world. In and fact, another. Ain't that another reason why they watch the uh, Wall Street the Nouns back and all of that? Because that's a part of us, which is originally where they got the Wall Street from anyway, which exactly. was first black Wall Street in the beginning. Exactly. So that's why they're running the bond paper and all of that, too. That's why they're so busy. So that's why the world pays attention to New York. That's why it's so big for its commodity of what they're doing and the exactly. world and all of that. Exactly. Exactly. So we know that the letter of the Sultan of Morocco was sent to the city of New York, which is Northwest Africa, also called North of Mexum, or the North Gate, and is not the Kingdom of Morocco, Africa. All right? We, now we know. The Omex, all right, hey, the last rulers of the Western Empire, y'all, which is the Moroccan Empire. This is what we was verified by the fact of them calling us the Omex people. Actually, it's the She people. Which is Kush people. The Sh, Kush, Sh, Kush. Same people. So when you say the Shi people, the Kushite people, the Shanghai, Mali and M, um, um, Moors, or Mandinka people, they were the last rulers. That's the us. The last rulers of the Western Empire, which is Moroccan or Moorish Empire. That's the us. Religious, religiously, it's called Islam. All right? I self lord and master. Or I self lord and master. They became known as the Ottomans or the Otamis. The Ottoman or Otamis. Historically, they were the Dogon, which, if you go and verify, are the Egyptians. All right, the Dogons left Tamari, which is Kemet, Egypt, around 6,000 BCE, which is 8,000 years ago. But carry with them the teachings of Tahuti Mes, peace, which is Tahuti Mes is Hermi Trimagestis, called Hakkak, which is the Herbach, the ancient mystery school system. This is why um, in the Stolen Legacy by George G. James, he says that the Moors are the custodians of the ancient mystery school of Egypt which is Kemet. This is why when you read any information from um, Professor Walter um, Professor um, Walter Williams, 
He said that we are the Egyptians. And people don't understand. Why, how, what the hell he means that we are the Egyptians here in America? Huh? Shit don't make no Oh, it makes a whole lot of sense. Once you find out that the Omex are the Egyptian Nubians who went into Mali and became from the Dinka, became the man and Dinka, the same people, and who is also the Dogon, as we showed you earlier, that revealed that Benjamin Banneker, the surveyor, the astronomer, the mathematician, the former, the almanac publisher, the multi genes, so called African American, actually was descended from the Dogon tribe of Mali, West Africa, hence, no West Africa, so hence, he actually was a Lenape, or of the tribe, as we now refer to it as, as the Banneker tribe. The Aben, the Aben, the Abenaki tribe. Look up the Abenaki tribe. A B E N N A K I. The Abenaki tribe. They actually are families of the Lenape tribe. And you find that the Lenape and the Abenaki at one time dwelt within the territory called Delaware and Maryland, which happened to be where. This free Moor happened to have been born. See, this is how we get all this information back together. So here, it circulated in 1775, the first president of the United States of America under the Articles of Confederation with John Hanson, allegedly a black Moor. He was also born in Maryland, but he was from the Shuni Native American. He was from the Shuni tribe, which happened to also be the Lenape, the Nanakotes, all right? The Shuni Native American patriot who fought in the American Revolutionary War. You come down, see the Nubopic Moors newspaper, August 7, 1991. And it says, a Moorish mason by the name of Ben Vey Emmanuel Muali, a.k.a. Benjamin Banneker, was the uh, architect who designed the streets of Washington, D.C. with Masonic codes and astrological glyphs. Don't believe it? Go and get the book. Yeah, I secret. The talisman. I mean, I mean, yes. That Abenaki tribe ain't looking too good, man. What are you talking about? You gotta, the, the images, man. Oh, my God. It's, 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 it's disrespectful. Oh yeah, I know that. I know that. I know. I know. I know God. You, you know, they got to hide what they can, God. You know, they got to hide it. Oh, they got to hide it. They yeah. try to make it look like it was alien people, or they right. live up underground or something. Because I've been researching that for a while now, right, and it's right, not right. looking. You know, and it's like, is this supposed to be our people? But why they make them look like these characters, like they from like right. a land or another plane field? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they they got to do what they can, you know. You know now that um ancient um ancient aliens is out on TV on the History Channel and you know and it's on the History Channel, so it must be real. Uh, <laughs> it must be history, you know, and it is his story, you know. But um the whole point is is that uh, just connect the dots. You ain't got to worry about their dots. Just connect your dots. <laughs> real, quick, real, real quick, Eileen. Yeah. I was reading the description of it. It said they were seeking protection from the Iroquois Confederation. Exactly. Yeah. And that was the Moors. That's who they were seeking protection from. Okay. That's who they were trying to connect with so that we can recognize them. That was the Americans, the Aboriginal indigenous people. Known as the yeah, Iroquois. They had it in the uh, record. Where they were saying that we had these unknown powers where we could wake up back from the dead you know, put our body parts together, and that's the reason why they have to use gun violence against us or some type of firepower to destroy the God gene of the power. But basically yeah. what I read was that we could stop a bullet in its tracks if yeah. we uh, demonstrate and bring that force of power up. Yeah. You know? Well, that was, that was proven by Queen Nanny in Jamaica. Us soldiers would go out and, de and um, defeat the British... And bullets will bounce off of them. Wow. So this is a proven fact. Just look up the history of Queen Nanny. N A N. Okay. Queen Nanny. Yeah. Maroon. 
a moor. These are the moors in Jamaica. So here, a Moorish mason by the name of Ben Bay, Emmanuel Mu Ali, who we talked about earlier, is Benjamin Banneker was an architect who designed the streets of Washington, D.C. with the Masonic Code and astrological glyphs. Read the book, America's Oldest Secret, The Talisman, United States, Mysterious Street Lines of Washington, D.C. by the signature of the Invisible Brotherhood. Well, if he designed these streets of the Invisible Brotherhood, then he must have been the head of the goddamn Brotherhood. He was Chief Justice. The Chief Justice. All right? It says the autobiography of Benjamin Banneker. Right now, here it is. Assisted by England, Scotland, Ireland, Netherlands, France, Germany, Finland, and Sweden, the United States of America ended their war with the Moors. Remember, these are the same people who had to pay us tribute now that we just read in Dooley's book. Moroccan Empire and signed the Treaty of Peace and Friendship with the Emperor Mohammed III. See, they'll never want to say he's a bay, but he is Muhammad Ibn, he is Abdullah Ibn Muhammad III, Emperor or Sultan of Al Morak or Moroccan Moorish Mason. All right? The aforementioned treaty is the longest unbroken treaty in the history of the United States, of course, because it was signed on the Delaware River, as we went over last week. So here it is. On the back of the $2 bill, see? See, when we looked at the $2 bill, we see it like this. But when you zoom in, oh, shit, you got to zoom in on them. So when you zoom in on them, you see the man on the left is John Hansen. And the man on the right is Ben Bay. Who is Benjamin Banneker? And Ben Bay was born 1730. As we said earlier, making him about 45 in this picture. While John Hansen was born 1721, making him about 55 in this picture. He's the one with the gray hair. Yeah, yeah, they niggas. They know. They're the Nagas. Return of the ancient ones, the Moorish Nagas. If you look in um, Uncarter, Encyclopedia. Neither of these men. Why is that? I'll give you the reason why. Their names are not on the Declaration of Independence because they were both Moors. But they was in the hall. Obviously, they was in Independence Hall. Controlling shit. Making sure they signed it. And we had our own government, as you know, which was the Iroquois Confederation. The Confederacy. And remember, George Washington destroyed the Confederacy. We did not need to sign a Declaration of Independence. We wrote the Declaration of Independence for them. We verified this last week. However, George Washington and his cronies never actually severed their tie to the king, and they did not win the Revolutionary War. It was a setup to trap the total and totally defeat the Moors from within. Absertion. That's what they did. It was a setup. What you was taught in schools is called reconstructed history. But Darlene, I have my two I have a bunch of two dollar bills and mm -hmm. on the back of the two dollar bill it says Declaration of Independence seventeen seventy six and you can see them on there. I don't know if you can see this on my camera, but you can actually see where it says and what they have changed it. But this is the only bill that says Declaration of Independence, which is on a $2 bill. You have to purchase these at the bank now requesting a $2 bill now. Oh, show it one more time on the video, guys. Can y'all see that? Yeah, we can see it. Oh, yeah, okay, there, yep, yeah, that's them. Yep, there it is. Right there. Yeah, I got, I got one in my pocket. I got pocket. Of them. I've been saving them because I don't know what they're going to be worth. Exactly. We save them too. Exactly. Oh yeah. Oh, you got yours too, Arisha. Yeah. yeah. Let's look at it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Back of exactly. it. That's the back of independence it. right there. there uh huh. So, so, so we know that these two brothers at the Declaration of Independence. This is verified by y'all putting up your two dollars. Where, where those things in the back? Of the right. It ain't two cents. It's two dollars. Two dollars. In the, in the back of where? Who, who's back? Where do you see that at? I mean, I'm get time to uh, mess with you. <laughs> anyway, 
<laughs> talking about, talking about uh, what some things on the back of his back of his <laughs> back of his neck. He's talking about some wings. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, it is now well known that the first president of the United States was John Hanson or more. John Hanson is sitting in the fifth seat of the left, as we showed you, Prince. Um, uh, uh, Chief Justice Ben Bay and Manu Ali, known as Benjamin Banneker, is sitting masonically number 13 to the left, first at the table. According to Masonic traditions of Prince Hall Masons, they say that one of the moors on the back of the $2 bills is Prince Hall. However, according to the elder moors, Benjamin Banneker is one of the two moors. Esoterically decoded, Prince Chief Justice Ben Bay and Manu Ali of the Abenaki of the Abenaki Banaka tribe, mm -hmm. whom was a prince that built halls, lodges, temples, as he built the city of D.C., District of Columbia, as well as also he built the city of, of um, Philadelphia, brotherly love. As mentioned previously, hence it is the true origin of the name Prince Hall. So Ben Bay Emmanuel Muali who is known as Prince or Chief Justice, he's the Prince Hall of the free Masonic founders of African Lodge Number 1. Designed the city of Philadelphia, as we said, and Washington, D.C., and he perfected the science of the, of, the, uh, of the federal government based on numerology and astrology, astronomy, after of the Tumerian, Kemetic, Egyptian structures, and the Moorish government. All right? Philadelphia was the second capital of the United States, right? Because the first capital is the, our first seat is Morris was the city of New York, as we showed, which was New York but under the belt, um, which was you know, later on named Belgium, um, um, Amsterdam, which is now called New Amsterdam. Um, actually, it was New York, but really um, that was our seat, which was the seat of the Lenape, the seat of the Seneca, the seat of the Hmong Tak, all of these was so-called black people, Moors. All right. You so just that answered my question, darling. Huh? You just answered my question. I was having because I was like, hold on, we was going over earlier. I always right. knew that Philadelphia, because the the one one uh, the White House that we burned down was in Philadelphia. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, so now you just answered my question. It was number two in Philadelphia. Yeah. Number two. Brother Reese. Yes, brother. Run that by Sabir next time you talk to him. Uh -oh. oh, yeah, I am. I am. I'm going to beat him up again, man. I'm tired of beating him, you know. Philadelphia was second, and Washington, District of Columbia, was third, in case you never knew. But back to our point, Philadelphia was the capital that our forefathers' records were kept. Many failed to realize that um, for Ben Bay, Benjamin Banneker, he designed a city which mathematically, with this type of mathematical precision, could not be simply relied on drawings, even though it is said that the Frenchman, um, Major Pierre Charles Lefinfant, um, the city planners for Washington, D.C., took his plans with him after his dismissal, leaving no copies behind. But a few books established the fact that Lefant, um, Lefinfant was really the middle man working from a set of original plans brought by, developed by Benjamin Banneker. Uh-oh. 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 That destroys their whole premise. Right? We're going to have to um, mute your background, brother. Too much noise. All right. So right there. But a few books establish the fact that Lafayette was really the middle man working from a set of original plans developed by Benjamin Banneker, but carried out by George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. That was until the plans was taken and they needed to call in the original designer, Banneker. All right, so um, hopefully this explains a whole lot. Right? So um, here 
of the plans. All right. This 40 mile radius or 10 mile circumference, um, well, 10 miles um, in each direction. All right. So here, most Americans do not know Washington, D.C. was originally an alleged slave plantation in Maryland. All right. Uh, Republican Nancy Pelosi. A representative Nancy Pelosi, excuse me, to speak of the House, mentioned it in her remarks at the December the 2nd, 2008, dedication at the Capitol Visitor Center. The Capitol was built by slaves. This is what it keeps being said. Pelosi said, Jesse um, J. Harlan, author of Black Men Built the Capitol, discovering African American history in and around Washington, D.C., reveals that the enslaved so-called black men helped construct the White House, not just the Capitol building, but also the White House, and the designer Pierre Lafayette, Lafayette um, commissioned the captured so-called blacks from their slaveholders, while the architecture James Harban bought some of his own enslaved men. Now, we know that Pierre Lafayette, um, Lafayette, Lafayette took his copy, right? Took his copy. But here you have a painting. This is the Scottish Rite now. This is at the Scottish Rite Masonic Museum, yo. <laughs> Who is that brother holding that goddamn? <laughs> holding that? Hmm? Ain't that Benjamin Jonathan? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so why not have never talk about that five Negro plan that that was back when he was? Mm hmm. So right here, this is out. Huh? They leave that out. The five presidents that were black before the European. Oh yeah. Scottish Rice Masonic Museum, or you painting by Peter Wardell, depicts a meeting between President George Washington, who was Adam Weiser, and surveyor Andrew Ellicott, and Benjamin Banneker. Mm. So Pierre um, Lafayette is not there. James Hoban is not there. The man who is holding the actual documentation is the same one who I just finished reading about that but a few books established the fact that Laf in fact was really the middle man working from a set of original plans developed by Benjamin Banneker but carried out by George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. That was until the plans was taken and then the need to call in the original designer, Danica. So this is him coming in with the original plans, as we see here, at the Scottish Rice Masonic Museum. <laughs> Can the devil fool the Muslim? Not nowadays, yo. <laughs> So, I know people keep saying, well, you keep saying that that's Adam White stuff. Well, it is. This man right here to the right, I mean to the left, Robert Anton Wilson, co-author of the best-selling Illuminati, um, Illuminati Latis trilogy. This one is called The Cosmic Trigger, Final Secret of the Illuminati. I'm getting ready to reveal to, reveal to you the final secret of the Illuminati. Go to the right. Now, go to the picture, to the name that's under the picture. What is that name under the picture, y'all? White Sox. Adam White Sox. Adam White Sox. But ain't that the picture of George Washington? Was he removed the murdered? Oh, there we go. They look very similar. So he was able to come in, kill them all, take the position. 
But the same image that they got on the one dollar bill is the same picture that they got of Adam Weiss off. Mm-mm. Well, well. So this is why we find out that the founder of the Bavarian Illuminati, Adam Weissoff, came to America and took the position of George Washington, who was general at the time, to become president of the so-called United States. And then cut down and absurd the power of the Moors. Prophet Noble Ali retrieved the Moorish flag in the year 1913 and called the Moors to attention. It is the job of conscious Moors to fly the Moorish flag again in our own land, Almorak, America. Uplift the Moorish nation. Well, at the bottom we find George Washington, the ninth president, because remember he was nine years old. He said, at nine years old as a child, he said, Father, I shall not tell a lie. I chopped down the cherry tree. <laughs> <laughs> but him being non actually meant that he was the ninth president of the United States under the Confederation, which is the Articles of Confederation. So chopping down to proverbial cherry tree in 1774 is the national flag of the defeated Moors. How do we know that? Because, oh shit, I'm telling you, boy, we be knowing this shit. Here it is, Fort Negro, 1816. This is what it says. In the evening, a dispute, a distribution of chiefs went into the fort and demanded its surrender. But they was abused and treated with the utmost contempt. The black chief, uh-oh, the black chief, the Moors, y'all, the black chief had much abuse of the Americans, the United States, colonialists, that is, and said he had been left in command at the fort by the British government that he would sink any American vessel, that's United States vessel, that is, that should attempt to pass it and would blow it up the fort if he could not defend it. The chief also informed me that the Negroes had a red flag and the English Jack was flying over it. Uh oh, these are the pirates. Cause the pirates had the Ro the Roger the um Jolly Roger, English Jack. It says right here. The question that must be answered is what was these former slaves that was their purpose for flying the two flags they was flying? Slaves don't have flags. A flag represents a nation. So what nation did they represent? The old flag of the Al Moroccan Empire. This is the original flag of the Moors. That's the original flag of the Moors. So Indian is a code name used by the European Albion conquerors of civilization in the West, applied to the mixed indigenous Moorish tribes in the Alish English. They may be hard for many state educated people to believe. India is the continent of Asia. The Al Morocco, America, are not India. The word India is derived from the word Hindu or Hindustani of the East. The Europeans favored the name Indian because the Indo, the indigenous people of the Americas, Al Morocco, was clearly related by culture to the Asiatics in the East. The word India was also referred to the indigo, which is a berry color, blackberry color, um, excuse me, blackberry of the indigo plant used by the Moors from ancient times to the present. The dye is used on clothing, um, jalabas, turbans, and the black tassel, which adores the cherry fez, um, cherry red fez, the national headdress. The flag of the Al Moroccan Moors, the old glory, all right, cherry. A cherry red flag, and of course, later came the five pointed star in the center. The Peruvian cherry tree, George Washington shot down in 1774. All right, so you keep going. Marsh, American history, nationality, and birthright taken away from the Moors, Philadelphia. By 1774, most of the Moorish armies was defeated. The European settlers did nothing at first. They just studied them and 
what they ate, lived, and act after being conquered and put into slavery, or history of the Moors and their teachers were collected by the Europeans and burnt or hid, and then once in a while they give you a crumb. So that's what we do in this class is take all the crumbs and make a cake. That's what we do. In the same year, at 6 in Chestnut Street, Philadelphia, the Moors were stripped of their names, nationality, birth rate, and the word Negro, Black, and colored, Ethiopian, African American was placed on them instead. Their national last name was El and Bay. They Dating back in times to Hagar, um, at, um, Abraham and Hagar, who both real named Adam, um, Abraham, El, and Hagar Bay. On October the 14th of the same year, the first Continental Congress meeting at Independence Hall at 6 and Chestnut Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, at the national capital. A result of the meeting was the was the enforcement of the five, excuse me, of the seven articles of the present day Constitution, known that as the Articles of Confederation. The enforcement of that law put the Moors who clung to the words marks of Negro, black, and colored outside of the constitutional fold, thereby rendering them as undesirables and thus unable to receive the rights and immunities as well as the protection of a citizen as provided by the national constitution, who we helped form the constitution for them. What? Whereas by their being recognized as undesirable, the slave advocate could use them to supply the slave labor, which was in great demand in the new nation without fear reproach of the lay of the law. However, in 1774, this country was not lawfully recognized as being its own independence. Therefore, the word for Negro, Black, and Color were not officially put on the records of the Moors. Um, but used extensively in actual practice. In the year 1776, to the signing of the Declaration um, or the Declaration of Independence, the Moors was divided as a nation. One flag was taken down by George Washington, um, um, out in, um, down the proverbial cherry tree, of which our flag was widely known because of its bright red color fill of five pointed star. Some just say that it was um, without the um, five pointed star. In 1774, the Moors were perpetually was put into perpetual slavery, and the word Negro, Black, and Colors were put on their state records. At this juncture, it needs to be noted to clarify that perpetual slavery did not exist in America until 1779. It did not exist until 1779. Hmm. Seven, yes. I had that discussion with uh with Sabir the other day. He told me mm -hmm. he said he was Ethiopian. I was like, how? He <laughs> said what? He said he was Ethiopian. I said how? Right. He didn't want to explain. I was like, well, I'm gonna leave you alone, bro. Look. It is journals of the Continental Congress. Right, the first Continental Congress met. From September the 5th to October the 26th, 1774, the Second Congress met from May 10th, 1775 to, 7, to March 2nd, 1789. The Journal of the, Constitute, of the Con Congressional Congress, or the records of the daily proceedings of the Congress, as kept by the um, office of his secretary, Charles Thompson. It says here the general the um journals were printed contem contemporaneously in different editions and in several subsequent re reprinted editions. None of these editions, however, includes the secret journal confidence section of the records, which was not published until eighteen twenty one The second edition published by the Library of Congress from 1904 to 1937 is based on the manuscript journal and other manuscripts records of the Continental Congress in the manuscript division of the Library of Congress. Further information on how this edition was assembled as well as notes explains future um, um, features introduced by the editors may be found in um, the pre 
for Tory notes in volume one and two. So when people say that George Washington didn't cut down the tree, then uh, for all the Moors who insist that George Washington cut down the tree did not represent the denationalization of us indigenous Moorish Americans, then what the hell is that red flag laying on the ground by George Washington's feet? <laughs> all right, what is that? You know, looks like the flag that we just finished talking about, the old flag of the Al Moroccan Empire. The flag of which that goes back to 50,000 years, according to the 102s. According to the 101s, 10,000 years. <clears throat> because of that dis discrepancy, I go back to the original ones that was published, which is the 102s. I don't read the 101s. The 101s was put together by Charles Kirk Bay, and he took out one of the lessons. All right, and we'll get to that lesson the next class of what he took out and the reason why. But this is what was said allegedly. If we were to agree to take the feathers and the turbans off the Moors' heads and to remove the sandals from their feet and enforce it with severe punishment and to also swear a death oath between ourselves religiously and faithfully not to allow anyone to teach the Moorish children who they really were or who their forefathers were. We're too late for that shit. To only teach or allow the Moorish children to be taught that they are truly Negro blacks and black people and colored folks. George Washington, this is why you have the Black Lives Matter group. Black Lives Matter. The Black Lives Matter. <laughs> this is why you have the RBG. This is why you have all of these individuals talking all of this shit to confuse people, and many people are confused. Best believe that. But anyway, we go on. George Washington stated that 200 years from today, the Moorish people would not know their nationality nor the national name of their forefathers. Also, they would not know from which land or ancestors that they are, that they are descended from. The meeting adjourned with a cons um, um, consensus that they would secretly meet again October the 14th, 1774 at the Pennsylvania State House, which later became known as Independent Hall. Mm, 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 mm. They've been trying to trick us for so, so long. Right now, allegedly, this quote that we read, this quote came from the minutes of the First Continental Congress, a.k.a. the Odd Fellows Convention, which represent, uh, representatives of many of the European Colonies here in the America convened, met, and conspired in 1774, two years before the Declaration of Independence, who declared into law the strategically planned the perpetual enslavement of Asiatic people in America. This information has been passed down to us by Gloria Shelton. This is no link for, the, um, for this particular quote per se. In regard to the strategy the Europeans used in stripping our forefathers of the nationality, divine creed, and inherited birthright is a follow is as follow. If the Moors were ever to set um, free in future, they will remain subjugated and de um, dominated by the European race that has sole authority in classifying systems via race, which race being erroneously Distinguished as color, such as black race, white race, the Moors would unknowingly forfeit their right and true citizenship. Under slavery and the classification system, the Asiatics of Moorish descent would not have any rights under the laws governing free national citizens. Methodically, the Moors, illegally known as the slave marks, 
Now remember, they're supposed to be giving us marks, which was money, but damn, these are the marks that they gave us. Where our damn money at? <laughs> Negroes, colored, <laughs> will rob themselves of civil of um, citizenship because none of these names pertain to a true nation of people. This information is, isn't readily known. The records of the meetings in the first Continental Congress is known as the Journal of Continental Congress, and they represent the records of the Delhi um, present, um, presiding of the Congress, which were kept in the office of his secretary, Charles Thompson. These journals was printed in different editions and in several consequent record, uh, reprinted editions. None of these editions included the secret journal that are the so, see, we need to get our hands on that secret journal, all right, in which that tell us all of this information and more. That are the confidential sections of the record, which was not published until 1821. The complete editions was recorded by the Library of Congress from 1904 to 1937. These secret uh, journals were available during the time of our Holy Prophet Noah Ali. <clears throat> Quite obviously, these journals have been evidence to accuse and convict the Euro Freemason aristocracy in seats of government if they were freely available now to the public. George Washington had many slaves also, but the effect of the cause of the plan of the state, excuse me, of the series, nor accept Euro Freemasons are quite apparent and testifies to the fact of the above said quote, and burying Hiram Abiff in a secret grave in the West. At the Christian Black Coast, Jim Crow, Murmur's Parade, these are the parades celebrating the enslavement and segregation of the Moors. What happened, um, which happens every year, even in, um, we've seen it happen in Spain, but hell, it even happens in here, Pennsylvania. And starts on Broad Street and Moore Street. All right? Planned Parenthood manifest destiny, the plethora of programs in existence to keep the Moorish a nationless, powerless people. All right. It's by um, Elijah um, Mesfin, um, L. Shay. So here we have it on the back. All right. Wrong flag, because that's the intersector flag, but... And um, also the pyramid, which we really deal with, is actually the eyes attached to the body pyramid. But this actually shows the union. And this is why there's two seals on the back. Our seal to the to the left, which is known as um, the Illuminati seal. Oh, that's the Illuminati. You know. So, we now know that you go to the DOS row, um, the Oklahoma Historical Society, you can put in your name, your last name of your people, family members, and it will pull up um, if you're a Choctaw, if you're a Cherokee, Seminole, Creek, or Muskogee, right, which is the Creek, um, and Chickasaw. It will pull up your connections. I have a question. Do they yes. ever update these systems to us now? Um, yes, they have some updated. Oh, okay. Cause um, I put my name in it, but I put my family members' names in it, and it pops up. But when I put myself in there, I won't pop up. No, cause they still have you denationalized. What was your family name lineage? Glenn. Um. Ashley, um, Foster. Um, right. And, yeah. and were, they, were they Choctaw? Yes, they were Cherokee, Choctaw, Seminole, 
mm-hmm. and salt. So I did it on mother's side, daddy's mm-hmm. side, mm-hmm. Uh, grandmother, maternal yeah. grandmother, maternal grandfather, on both of my parents' side, and found out that I have Cherokee, Chickasaw, right. Right. Seminole, right. and um, Turner. Our last name was Turner, so oh, I just sure. Yeah, so I was surprised about that. I was like, oh, I might be related to the emperor. Yeah, you are. <laughs> You know, we gonna, we might we have to move we might have to move up your um your chiefdom <laughs> to princess. <laughs> but yeah, we saw that the other day. My mom and me we stayed on the phone for about two or three o'clock in the morning, and we found out that China was part of the um fairly side because right. she was an Edmund at first, mm-hmm. and so now we know that our families were original names were China because she married into a family called Fairly. And so we were trying to find who my great great grandmother was and found out that she was a Turner. Ah. Excellent, excellent. So we spoke on this last week, showed everybody how to get up into that info. So yeah. so here it is. Your second great grandmother was born an Indian. No. Your, your great grandmother was born a colored your grandma was born a Negro, your mother was born a black, and you was born an African American. Well, God damn. <laughs> and that's exactly how they got it, too. When yeah. we looked at it, my grandmother is considered a Negro, but right. my great grandmother is considered a color woman, yeah. and her mother is the one who we found out was the Turner, who were they Indian? Was mm-hmm. they Indian? So I was like, wow, this is crazy. Mm-hmm. My 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 birth certificate was blank. They forgot about me. <laughs> <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> it's blank for real. That nerd. Mm-hmm. Oh. All right, so this is what we found. It's official. Early scholars describe Americans, indigenous people as Moorish. All right? Warlock Asylum, October the 15th, 2017. Who, who got the, who got, who got the, the puppy? <laughs> that little boy. But he's a small dog. One of you two. All right, so right here. Crossed. <laughs> Wait a minute. Come here. All right, so right here. The origin of American Native American or Native population has long been a subject of debate. The theory that the indigenous natives of America was the result of Asian crossing the Bering Strait is no more substantial than the idea that America was populated by Moors having traveled across the Atlantic and settled in the Americas. Actually, the latter theory was the opinion of most scholars before the abolition of slavery. Others believe that the American is an old melting pot in the Indigenous inhabitants is a result of such migration from both Africa and Asia. Published in 1864. No, you better lay down. So right here it says, published in 1864, The Indian Race of North and South America by Charles D. Wolf, Brownsville, Brownsville, um, making his observation on page 15 of his classic work, says some theorists, some theorists have indefatigably followed up the idea that we are to search for the lost tribes of Israel among the red men of America. 
and have found in fancy resemblance otherwise unaccountable because of between Indians and Hebrew words, ceremonies, and superstition. Others have established equal intuitively, intuitively, intuitivity, excuse me, in carrying out a compar comparison between the Moors of Africa and the Americans. Expl um, claiming to 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 um, establish a near affinity in character and complexion between the two races. They supposed the Moorish inhabitants had been arrived at the West Indies Islands, India Islands, and the uh, eastern coast of North South America, and thus they had spread it all over the continent. All right. According to Brownell, whose writings were published decades before the inception of the more scientific America and the birth of Nobu Ali, it was an opinion of early scholars that the Moors were the first to populate America. Yeah. That the Moors were the first to populate the Americas. And such comparisons were largely due to a near affinity of of character and complexion between the two races. Amazingly, early scholars agreed that the Carib Native Americans, uh, Native tribes, excuse me, was certainly originated from Africa. Published in 1855, um, ethnological and philosophical essays by James Kennedy states. On these grounds, Byron Edwards was just for his hypothesis and observation and observing that the Caribs seemed to be to him an entirely distinct race from other Indians, while he differed from them as a, um, a physical. Um, let me see. I have come to the same conclusion and from what have come under my observation of this this people. They generally appear appearance and features, notwithstanding the the um the um straight shiny hair, give me the idea that African um that idea of the African than the Native American, and in fact of their having come from Africa was not even in accordance with the um, Rashford account consisting in their um, traditions as they merely state that they have come by sea from a far country, which is thinks in itself all right, from this day. All right. All right, so here it is. According to the coast people of of um Texas, it's called the Kara Kawa Karankawa Indians, the coast people of Mexico. There's the term Moorish as here applies, really be regarded as a deceptive one, in as much as Montezuma, the king of Mexico, or Tesmes um, Titan, is consequently designated as a Moorish king in the same inventory of 1596. It is interesting to note that the gradual change that occurs in the wording of consequent um, periodical official record um, of this more chat. All right. So right, it is interesting to note that the gradual change that occurred in the wording of the subsequent periodical official registration of this Moorish hat 
1613, um, this description was fairly reproduced. In 1621, the word Indian was substituted for Moorish. All right, with the single alteration, the single text were again transcribed 1730. Here is a clear reference to the description article, um, describes articles collected from among the indigenous tribes of Mexico during the 15th century to what has been termed Moorish and were later changed to Indian. Right. Uh, I'll read this last one here. Mexico life as one of the Moorish origin. This is from the Journal of American Folklore, Folklore Volume 8, 9, page 112. It states that um, Mexican life is one of Moorish origin. Over the past few months, we hope to explore the forgotten knowledge of ancient America. Okay. I um don't know where these particular words come from and which the titles that we use, El Bay, Gay, El Ali. Well, when you use the word Bay, Bay actually is the origin of Osiris, which is Osir. Osiru. And Bay means noble, priest, or a form of Osiris and Ra. When the Moorish Empire ruled the world, all Bayliths were Bayliths. The term Bay became Bay, B A Y, and B A I. Right? The ancient uh, history of the dis of the distinguished surnames mm -hmm. by the Historical okay. Research Society in Oak um, Orlando, Florida, Aate Wastoich, states that the Bay's pioneer became the um, the nucleus of the first settlement from Maine to the Columbian Gap. That's Nick of oh, Kentucky. All right. Uh, it says they provided much of the stock that produced the early presidents and governors of the United States. So who used the term Bay? It had to be those of the Iroquois Confederation, known as the Cher Cher Chicokoi or the Cherokee. And these eight formed what we know. You, you too. Mm -hmm. And um, these, these, um, these are. This is where John Hansen, his stock comes from, as well as um, those other presidents. Remember, there was nine before. There was um nine before. Uh, well, eight actually. There was eight before um, George Washington. He was the ninth. On the Articles of Confederation. But as you remember reading in the letter to the Bay, he talked about um, them destroying the last, which was that constitution that we helped them put together, all right, which was the Declaration of Independence, as we know. All right? So. Well, I mean, yeah. Uh, you talked about the day. And bays uh, being B I E, mm -hmm. 
Some of them are Bay I uh some of the European sound Bay I A I G H mm-hmm. or, or D A Y. Is that possible that the, is, that they have Moorish blood lineage in their family somewhere? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Dawes Day, uh, Lorraine Day. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was just thinking about that. Right. They they would be um, called Swanee Moors. We are called what, what kind of Moors? We call Swarthy Moors. Swarthy Moors. Okay, I got you. They would be called Tawny Moors. T A W N Y. Tawny Moors. Okay. But I'm just saying mm-hmm. the D A Y and the B A I G H. Right. Right. They came. Uh, those are actually uh, a real origin is Moorish. Uh, mm-hmm. Of those terms. Right. They okay. provided All much right. of the stock that produced the early presidents and governors of the United States. So we know that the early presidents, they was Moors, and they came from the Bay bloodline, as we see here, which is actually all saw. So when I say I'm a Bay, I'm saying that uh, that's why um, my first name is Osaru, Osa, Osaru, which is Osa. So which, you know, my last name is Bay. So Osaru Bay. So Osa is called Bay. All right. So that's how even with my name, I'm um, connected. So in Canada, they settled Nova Scotia. St. Lawrence and the Ottawa Valley. The family name Bay provided much prominence contemporaries such as Colonel Bay who created the um, the Rio um, Canal and found the Ottawa. Bay in Old English or Moorish English originally meant governor or prince or big or bag B. Right? Bag big or bag B. Right, you get the word bay. Aline, got a quick question. Yeah. Let me turn this background down. Oh, John Hansen. Mm-hmm. Since he was the first of the uh, Confederate, who was before them? What 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 did we have over here before that? Or was we just going to the uh uh the Sultan of Morocco? Mm-mm. Before we mm-hmm. Before that, we had the Iroquois Confederation. Okay. And that's what George Washington destroyed. Yeah, I was just checking the was in the the facts about the uh, what's the name? It was talking about it in here. Mm Mm-hmm. Talking about uh, 17, 1781, his exact title was President of the United States and Congress Assembled. Right, and Congress Assembled. Yeah, so that was bringing me back to when we lost our nationality, was stripped in 1774. Mm-hmm. I was like, hold on, these dates, they still playing in these books. Like, yeah, no. remember, yeah. It was, remember, it was a Masonic secret. Right. So the Moors still was believing that, you know, that. You know, these Albions was, you know, wholesome and, you know, and, you know, uh, wasn't going to do any damage or harm. All right, so, you know, Beyonce, she goes by the title now as Queen Bay. And in one of her, um, in her video formation, she's standing next to the brother with the fez on, as you see here. So we know that this is a Hollywood mockery of the actual Queen Bay, you know, who would have been um, our Empress, where do I see Gaston Turner, um, Gaston L. Bay, all right? Because who's from out of Louisiana? Beyonce. So that means that she knows about her Creole history, but that would have been... Choctaw or Washington history. Okay. So, this is, let's look at this. L. For son was primitive 
Haitian and synonymous with tribe, children, family, divine, or son of God as in Asia. In the dialects, Rabu, Rahin, Mumu, Muru, meant son. In Muru, El meant son. Compare Ili, tribe in Persia, Dithel, man in Circassian, Lis, Osa, Lis, Lisji, Lishi, uh, Lili in um, Pelagician, Ol in Turan, now Oglu, Turkey. There you go. <laughs> okay. Olean, Bulgars, Latin, truly in Chutulan, Olios, Leos in Greek, Elius in Mongol, Chula, O English, Alu, Coptic, Bell, Etruscan, Kobaya, Berber, Heya, Indishilu, Yulu, okay. Afghan, okay. huh? Ely, Hungarian, Phileus, and Familia, Latin, even our words, fellow, child, and folks derive from this ancient source, the Orient El, Il, Ol, as in Olamax. In America, we find it in the Omecas. You get it? Right, so when you say that you are the Omex, you are the Els. And Mecca, or Mecca, all right, means the center. All right, they told you that it meant rubber people. <laughs> oh, that just simply means the rubber people. <laughs> Bullshit. Right. So yeah, now we know I mean. that L is short for the Omex. So when we say that we are L, we're saying that we are the Omex. You get it? In America, we find it is in O, Mecca. Yes, go ahead, God. Yeah, just to uh, go back to that Beyonce stuff. I see when you said it was just special, I just looked up to see if she was in any uh, leopard print or anything that deal with a leopard like the Empress had in her, you know, the, the bird that she had in her hand. Right. And that, uh, whatever that movie is, something black. That she right. did, did this 2020. She and right. all she leopard, did. everything. Yeah, she and leopard. Yeah, she is. Everything. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Indeed. So, they use using title Bay, they use using title L. So, this is why we had to explain them. And so, here it is. Also, there are pillars with Moorish names, including our titles L and Bay. All right. One day I went to the Grand Lodge Library of New York City on the 23rd Street in order to get more information on M-O-V-P-E-R or the Grotto in a pamphlet. Whoever well, came on, please mute your background. I found was the following pictures and explanation. One of the rituals involving the court of Mokana, which really means from the Moorish Canaanites. But as you see here to the left, you see El and Bay, which that we blew up. All right, El Bay in this case. So when we talk about the El Bay, it also takes us back to not just the Omex, but also the children of the Omex who still had these various titles. All right. So we know that the Omex are the Els, which is of the Ultima. The Ultimen. 
Empire, the Ot Otomis, of the Omex, the Elves, and of course the Bays, as we saw. So here it is. Here are the five Kushite comedic Moorish names that ties Indian Indos, in, Indians, Indios, uh, Chitanis to the sovereignty of America. El, Bay, Day, Al, and Ali. These five names belong to the five civilized tribes. These tribes are El, Cherokee, Bay, Choctaw, Day, Seminole, Al, Creek, and Ali, Chickasaw. The name El uh, means God, power, or force. Bay means ruler, governor, or landlord. Day means knowledgeable. Al means the same as El. In this case, El symbolizes the goddess or the feminine face of God, um, which is would be Shekinah. Um, Ali means the exalted or most high. These five civilized tribes came together to form a union called the Iroquois Confederation. And this confederation formed the Articles of Confederation, hence John Hansen, which formed the American government. The Articles of Confederation became the United States, uh, in this case, the Constitution for the United States of America. The Declaration of Independence and Articles of Association was already there. These documents were called the Four Constitution. Right? No coincidence that the Articles of Association came in the same year, 1774. All right? So when you realize America is Northwest Africa, you are indigenous. Oh, there it is, showing you once again um, the Pangea map of when it was at one time all together. Now you go to um, the dictionary of um, dictionary of the gods or um, of religion. Can't remember the title, but here it is. Look at the word Ben Shamish. Ben Shamish. Shamish. Shamish is son in Hebrew. Ben means the son of the sun. All right, so here it is. The children of the sons of the sun. The term belongs to the period when the Jews, who talk about the Hebrews, the Israelites, were divided into sun and moon worshippers, known as who? The Elites and the Baylites. We showed you earlier that Bay was from Osiris, or Star, or Saru. El begets later on from the Omex as the El Canaanites were the Phoenicians. And El had the son Baal, or Bil. Right? But the Elites and the Baylites, Hells and Bays. Right? So, Kali, the bringer of law, most noble and exalted, El of the cosmos, Lord giver of the Elohim, North Gate Bay, governors of the land of the Moorish. Civilization as an obey and enforce El Ohim law Morphe. J of the degree of the eternal zodiac Southgate and Al of the law descendant governors. All right, that's also another way to break it down, as we see here. And hence, our titles is taken by those who's part of the M O V P E R as they have on their um, quote unquote says this but they also have the full title El Bay so if we're not supposed to use El Bay then why the more then why the temple more so goddamn concerned about us using El Bay when they need to be concerned about these crackers using El Bay huh uh, it's, on their it's on their face they don't know what the hell they're talking about or doing. Exactly. So the Empress said, look, I know your shrine of history, just like Dooley did with the Moors, with um, Moors and, from, and Masonry. The Empress did the same thing. I'm taking back the El Bay title. 
you no longer is going to rock this. You know who do is. Huh? If you talk about Brother Dooley, his book, Moors and Masonry. Right? So it's the same thing. We took the title El Bay back as the Empress did, showing and demonstrating that, that this is something which that they should not be rocking on their feathers. We'll rock that title because this is a title in which that represents us as we clearly showed. They're not the Omex. They're not the Phoenicians or the Canaanites. They're not the Bashar and not the um um the Bays. That's not their history. We showed you who their history was. Their history was the opposite of ours, even though there was an attachment because we gave them the banner to operate commerce in our territory, in our land. Darlene. Yes. I don't want I don't I don't never like really speaking on uh them guys, but uh <laughs> I am having it. So what so what what are they? It's like the keepers of the shrine of us until we come back into to you formation or what? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Dr. Ali, is that why they um, are the imposters? Because when they see another brother, because I've seen this in person, where my husband might have had on his fans and right. we we'll see a shrine and they'll look, but they turn their head real quick and try to get away because they know that they perpetrated mm-hmm. The feds yeah. by putting the writings on the feds. That's why we, as yeah. um, Moabites, don't put nothing on our feds is to represent who we really are. This feds are tied down at 32 to 33 degrees. This time, I was is freely 360. 360. Is that because we gave them 120 degrees of knowledge? We gave them. Uh, uh, Three degrees of knowledge. So yes, one hundred and twenty would be equivalent to three degrees because one plus two plus zero is three. Three. And the three degrees is is the, and the three degrees is the which is uh, fellow craftsmen enter well enter the princess fellow craftsmen and master mason. Those those are the three degrees that we gave to them out of a nine degree system. And if you want to learn, if you, right, if they want to learn the other six degree system, then they have to become a Rosicrucian. Brother L, what level of Rosicrucian are you? A ninth degree plus. All right. I am also a ninth degree Rosicrucian. All right. So if they want to learn the other six degrees, they have to come through the more science, which is now held within the Rosicrucian teachings. So now we have all the degrees of our, of our shit back. <laughs> all right. If you are a Mason and if you are a, a Rosicrucian, you got your degrees back. You are the Illuminated One. You are the El Bay. We're not playing with these jokers no more. Walking around with Islam, walking around with Muslim, El Bay, Morocco. They actually have seminars for the Rosicrucian. Yeah. And the shrine of Detroit is actually considered Muslim. Yeah. Here, up here is Muslim um, for their Masonic Lodge. Right. So the, here it is, the five civilized titles, tribes of the Moors, which we broke down. Um, but once again, L would be the center of wisdom and gravity, the lawmakers, lawgivers, tutelage, power of the divine mind, bay, masters of na- nature, divine law, great law, enforcers, obey the law, um, nature law, nature supreme creator and sustainer. Al is the title for the scientists engaged in all sciences, mathematics, geometrical, ge- um, liberal, poly- um, political, Etc. Day is the title for those that mostly is in the South, South Gate, who are masters of the science, sciences, cosmology, and astrology, etc. And of course, Ali, as we said, um, is the title reserved for those who are and who have reached a master degree in this line of study. Thus is an earned title. All right, so 
Once again, we find bait, use. All right. Bay since 1281. And we showed you where Bay comes from. It comes from the name Osar. So this is um, obviously when they realized that Osar, one of his names was Bay. All right. This says since 1281. Of course, I will realize and speculate that it had to be before this, but since they're saying it, we'll keep on that task. If you ever wanted a job doing properly the first time, you always call it Bay. People with the last name Bay was renowned for their conscientiousness, effectiveness, and careful and careful attention to detail. All right, royalty hides them. As a matter of fact, hell, they was royalty. You ain't got to hide them. <laughs> they was the royalty. That's right. Mm -hmm. I gave you that earlier. Yeah, I gave you that earlier. All right, so royalty hired them for their most important task, causing um causing the name Bay to be associated with a job well done. Ali was used since 1433. In the old days, when some distinguished um, themselves as being brave, honorable, and possessing uh, utmost integrity, they were awarded the last name Ali. You see, people knew uh, when they met someone with the last name that they were meeting someone order, um, extraordinary and could depend on them to honor their word. Right now, this is from the um, Dictionary of Name book. By right? L, 1454, we know that it went further back than that, as we showed. But members of L family was long known for their optimism. They didn't get bogged down in life and negativity bounced off of them like water off a duck back. Because of their positive attitude, everyone they met found them pleasant to be around. All right? D, um, is That's Dr. Aleem all day. <laughs> Yep. All right. So appreciate that, y'all. All right. So right here, here it is. We know that um, they attempted to still denationalize us. If you go to Poverty Point, with all this different poverty with South Southern Poverty Law Center, if you go to them, they'll still denationalize you. With all this information that we break down every single week, they find a way to just say, oh, you're just a black person. <laughs> <laughs> and, they ask, and they ask for donations. Yeah, they yeah they send you a letter in the mail to ask for donations. Yeah, get get you a letter in the mail from them. <clears throat> so this is what he said here. So check this out. With 40 years of information that the Empress put out, Gaston claims the legitimacy of her claim has been recognized by agencies such as the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the United Nations, and the state of Louisiana. Is that true? We showed, your, we showed people the documents of it. Yep. So, yes, it's true, but... Yeah, that's not a uh, first world order book. Right, they, but they say that she claims. <laughs> no, the world claims. <laughs> <laughs> so, right here, it says the Washington nation claims 100,000 years of history, including mound-building Indians, but they've never been recognized as Indian tribe by the federal government. Since when the federal government have to recognize you as an Indian tribe? Oh, since you sold out and since you are taking bribery money from them. <laughs> that still doesn't stop us from being who we say that we are. So check this out. It says, in 1999, the Southern Poverty Law Center estimates the group to have about 200 hardcore members. Noting its popularity among Followers, followers of more science in an old, in an old black separate sect. <laughs> Damn, they even this in the more science temple of America. Followers of more science in old black separate sect. <laughs> Damn. Can you fix that? 
It says, today, United States courts have held that the Washington nation is fictitious, fictitional, and that it is not recognized as a sovereign nation. Wow. Then what is that number 215.93, which is the seat on the council at the United Nations is then, if it's not recognition as a sovereign nation. Right. Now we have to wait right. for the United okay. States. Now do we, proof right there. Right. Now do we have to wait for the United States to recognize us when I showed you earlier that we recognize them? <laughs> what kind of goddamn uh, 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 petty foot game these motherfuckers playing? <laughs> these, these people are playing we are recognized by the world at large right. and 144 nations across the world. Right. Why do we have to, rec why do the United States have to recognize us to be recognizable when we are the ones that historically recognized them 300 years ago, 200 years ago? Can somebody please tell me that? <laughs> we don't. Right. Approximately 250 years ago, we recognized them. Now, all of a sudden, 250 years, they got amnesia? <laughs> Bullshit. So we never needed their recognition to begin with. Sounds like they got some mental issues. Yes, they do have mental issues. This is why they are the largest um, 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 psycho, uh, uh, psychos. Mm -hmm. You know, and sociopaths, psychopathic and sociopathic on the planet. Try to play with psychology and they got solid Chicago done on them. Yeah. They never paid attention to Barack Obama. Yeah, obviously not. <laughs> Color blind. <laughs> so right here, Choctaw was a name given to the Washington because they were in all so called blacks light chocolate, brown in color. They were very many in numbers all around. This is the way that Choctaw is spelled now. Of course, it's Choctaw, C-H-A-T-A, -A, Choctaw, all right? Um, but they was not divided at times um, about April 1805. The hunting parties were culture. The parties um, um, fed those and uh, at home and clothed them with and by skin to make clothes, um, coats, excuse me, and foot wearing for the winter. The village was organized towns by international townships. The last telltale fact is that they were not um, liked by red or white men because um, they were people who were softly brown. All right, so in the beginning, where were the Choctaw? And my phone died. What in the hell? Okay, sorry, y'all. I gotta come all the way down. The heck? Well, we'll find it. All right, so uh, I'm gonna come back to that part. I do got some other things that I need to show, but right here, um, okay, here it is. All right, we'll use this one. All right. Now, all of those people were black aborigines. All right, you know what black means. The empress was using the term black. She wasn't too pressed on it. But we know that in order to stay out of that category, we don't want to use it as much except, you know, in um, close quarters. All right. The Washita Nation, including the Washa, the Choctaw, the several more tribes, these people were small and were the Choctaws. The Choctaws and the Turnica were all blacks. All right, this is why we call the Royal House of Turnica, the Royal House of Turner, to this very day. 
if the intent were to take the land, the last thing I know the white man would have done was make it a fact, a known fact that they were black. All right, so we know that they make the the um that the fact that they was black because they still denationalizing the people, and we just finished seeing in the article that we read where they kept referring to the Washington as just and the and the more scientific um you know as black, and the way that they read you know the way that they meant it, yet they had alluded to it between the lines by using words like aborigines, which we went over aborigines not being white or red. Notice um, also the distance that they were talking about. One family owned the entire Washita, which is spelled it Wichita, Oshita, Ashita, um, Upasta, um, Arkansas, Kansas, or Washa. It is still a black nation of chocolate brown people who can who count who was counted as three fifths of a person along with all other blacks in the San Louisiana purchase, and no deal was ever cut except to hang, rape murder, poison, and to steal their land. Case closed. All right, so, right, get the book Discovery of America in Outgrowth of the Conquest of the Moors by the Spaniards. All right, this is the book, and right there from New York City. <laughs> the Discovery of America. An outgrowth of the conquest of the Moors. So that means that the Moors was already in the Americas. Right? <laughs> and this is an account by the Spaniards. Which some of them was Moors. Alright? So. All right, went over this with the empress. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Oh, this is what something I wanted to show too was that um, th this was the empress um, embassy. The empress had her embassy in Louisiana. We have ours here in North Carolina. This is our embassy. So this is where we would continue to do, you know, documents and paperwork and get things straight for our nation. Okay. Um, right here, we even put it on the record, United Washington Embassy and Consulate. All right. All right, so right here, this is a statement from Brigadier, um, Brigadier General um, Sidney Jessup, June 1837, in American State Papers, Military Affairs, cited Kenneth W. Porter, the Negro on the American frontier. All right, this, you may be absurd, is a Negro, not an Indian war. All right, so what he said, this, you may be assured, is a Negro, not an Indian war. And if it be not speedily put down, the South will feel the effects of it on their slave population before the end of the next se season. If the war be carried on its most necessary but one of extermination, we have at no former period in our history had to contend with so formidable an appointed um, enemy. Formidable enemy. So we wasn't playing with the asses, as you see here. And it was not an Indian war. It was a Negro war, as he said. He says, no Seminole proves falsely to his country, nor his single instance, um, instance ever occurred of a first-rate warrior having surrendered. In other words, not one of us ever said we surrendered. We didn't pl ain't play that. The so-called runaway slaves, as they call the Seminoles, which actually the Yamasi and the Gullah people. Nothing but the mixture of the Gullah people and the Yamasi, South Carolina blood. Throughout my operation, I've found the Negroes the most active and determined warriors. Well, damn, that used to be in the days there, wasn't it? And during the conferences with the Indian chiefs, I exerted they 
exercising almost control and influence over them. The Negroes ruled the Indians. The Negroes ruled the Indians. That's why they mad. <laughs> why? Yeah, that's why everybody mad. Because we ruled them, we ruled the Indians, we ruled every damn body. That's why they like, don't let them niggas get back in goddamn control. <laughs> don't you let them niggas get back in control. You know how they treated us the last time. <laughs> they remember. They ain't forgot. You remember how they treated us the last time. Would you let them niggas get back in control? But these are the Seminoles that he's talking about. Look at them. Seminole Indians, descendants of Georgia, South Carolina, Muscogee Creek tribes. Our families own all of America with their pre-black, pre-colonial, aboriginal nations' identities until the United States Corporation stripped our grandparents of their self-governance and land title by reclassifying our grandparents from Indians to legal fictions, landless, meaning black, Negro, mulatto, African American, Ethiopian, and colored. Yeah. Ali. Yes. For years, I've been seeing Johnny Aborigine stuff. Where yeah. he at? He wrong. <laughs> did, did, he, did he declare his nationality yet? I have no idea. Okay. As far as I know, you know, Negroes still thinking that they Indians. <laughs> this is why we got to put it in perspective. And show you that these are Moors. This is the actual painting of us chopping off crackers' heads during the war of the Seminole Wars. Look at that! Head, look at that damn um, um, head chopped off right there at your feet, at your um, at the bottom of the screen. We wasn't playing with them. This is what they said. Now they said we're gonna take vengeance on them. Now this is what they're afraid of. Exactly. This is why they're afraid to tell us the truth. This is why now the truth is coming out, and we like we ain't taking no goddamn vaccine. You better step up. And, and we know what it's going to come to that. It's coming to that. It's an all-out war. That's why when I went to the gun store, they said that this is the most that they have ever seen so many people buying guns for the first time because our people ain't going no more. Right. Yeah. So these are actual paintings of the Seminole Wars which is the Yamasi Wars, which is the Gullah Wars. All of these wars are the same wars in which that we raged on for over 100 years against them. And you already heard what the Brigadier General said. The Brigadier General told you, look now, I ain't going to tell you no more. This, I can assure you that this is a goddamn Negro War and not an Indian one. <laughs> and they are damn determined. These niggas ain't playing with us. If you don't damn exterminate these niggas now, they're going to damn take over the country. This is what he was talking about. Oh, no. All right, so here it is. Get the book, The History of the African Omex. Black Civilizations of America from Prehistoric Time to the Present Era. All right? This is Paul Barton. He died in 2010. But it is. It says, among the other black nations who exist in America before Columbus and long before Christ was the Yamasee Indians, who had a large kingdom of the southeastern um, United States. Their descendants are among the first black or pre-Columbian African um, American origin to fall victim of kidnapping for the purposes of enslavement. The descendants of the Yamasee or the millions of blacks who live in Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and Northern Florida. What's the name of that author? Name again? Paul Alfred Barton. B-A-R-T-O-N, Barton. Paul Barton. Okay. Name of that book? The History of the African Omex. Black Civilizations of America from Prehistoric Times to the Present Era. And this is what Hold he said. Okay. Yes. Oh, shit. Hold on, y'all.
room. We clean it. Okay. Um. Well, you know, we've got to find a change, but you ain't got to worry about it today, okay? All right. I know, I see. Yeah. So right here, get the book, Carolina Genesis, Beyond the Color Line. Right? Beyond the Color Line. Thank you, Tevin. All right. So here it is, right? It says... A lot of tears. What, yeah, what she wants you to do is probably put put all them shoes on on top of those. Okay. Before you go, thank you. So right here, the Yamasi Indians or the Jamasi, also referred to as the look. We got the names now. Amo Garikikens. The Ama Karisis. And the uh, Amer Cario or Cario, the Amer Cario. What what is? Hold up. The Yamasi is known as the Amer Cario. Now we showed you what Amer um, um, means. So that, hold on. Let's let's see if we can find out something here. All right, so so remember, Mir made the guardian, uh, right, from the teachings of the Ptahotep, the oldest book in the world, by Issa G. Hilliard, the third, who is also a play member. You go to the Webster Dictionary in um, um, Thesaurus, United States and World Atlas. Look at the word more. What is in parentheses? Mer. Uh oh. <laughs> me. It's me. Right, mir. Right. So the word mir and more are the same thing. But that gives me a question. Um, the mir that you saw with the eagle that says mir mm -hmm. the guardian, they got that now on the police department cars called the guardians in Tennessee. They now have on the police, um, the public service cards. Well, if, somebody, now. Well, look, yes. if, somebody's in, if somebody's in Tennessee, then y'all need to sue them jokers. Right, because and, 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 and we were talking about this with some more members where they don't have where it says police anymore. They are called the guardians. And it's the same thing that you have posted here. And so it's like, my, my lights is clicking on right now. Like, okay, you just used a of Morris terminology on a public servant vehicle. And we as um, Morris need to be suing them. We need to be doing class action suits on everything as the Queen Mother has told us that we can find. It's real simple. I, I had a brother who came into um, my restaurant last week. Yes. He came to my restaurant last week and he um told my wife and I that he was that he got a group of lawyers and they doing class action suits and they suing Europeans for bragging about suppression and oppression and depression black people so called black people in their in their um autobiographies in their books. Wow. So you ain't got to do shit but read the books and sue them. <laughs> So we can sue the police department for using the word guardian, which is pretty much pertaining to us. That's a big open lawsuit with the state of Tennessee because that's what's all on their police public servant cars now. Right. Only in Nashville, though. Okay. Well, Nashville can get it. <laughs> Nashville can get it. So we know that Mir represents more. A mirror is a more. And we showed, we showed this over and over again as we connect right back to the fact that American, a native of American, right, originally applied to the aboriginals of, color, of the copper colored races found here by the Europeans. The original meaning of the word was meru. Meru is myrrh. 
which is more. One in the same. One in the same. Here it is once again. Western United Universal Dictionary, 1937. An aboriginal and one of the various push it back more on um, Tevin. Can you push it back? Move the other one out the way and push it all the way back. Yeah, there we go. So right here, it says the following is the original application of the name Miru. Mir. They just told you that the Americans was Moors. Did they not just tell you that? Once again, yeah. the following is the original application of the name Miru, M-E-R-U, which is for America. And then when you come down and find the word in Egypt, remember we are the Egyptians too. The oldest book in the world by the teachings of the Ptahotep, the oldest book in the world, the Guardian. And then it tells you that more is mere. One in the same. Yeah, I think Mar is also one in the same. Yeah. And then they tell you um, ancient North African, ancient now, North African people, right? Northwest Africa, that is. People of mixed Berber, which is Moorish, and Arab descent, only Arab because of the fact that we use Islam, or in this case, we call ourselves Muslims. Descent who invaded and conquered Spain in the 8th century, i.e. Moorish adjective. So now it's mer, more, and mer. So mers or moors, meru, the guardians, the custodians, the copper colored natives of America, all the same. All the same. So this, so them playing this tricks, these tricks over and over again, that is over. There's no more tricks to be done. It is over. We have figured out the game. <laughs> it is over. We got you. This is how we know that the original uh, um, um, Consular Course, it says right here, parentheses, Morocco is talking about here. Which the United States, as we read in the letter to George Washington, is attached to. Hence the word United States of America. America is not of the United States, so that means one has a superior position, as we always say. Hence, Morocco, Mur, Moor, was the Western Empire that fell. That was the de jure government that was once here. Taj is absolutely correct. This is why I had to go into details about it in order to show what he was saying. This is the truth of the matter. Get the book United States and Barbary Powers by David Marici. Hall book to find. You won't even find that book on the on the um on the um on websites anywhere. I haven't been able to find this book. I can't even find the uh, image. Right. So it's called The I United mean, States and the Barbary Powers by David Marici. The lay his ancient modern Britain, volume one and two is there, but not but not the Barbary Powers. In that book he tells you that the European nations paid tribute to the Moors well into the 19th century. Into the 19th century, though. The United States, the English, France, Dutch, Danes, and Swedes, and I may say all nations are tributary to the Moors. He said all the European nations had to pay money to us. Where my money at? <laughs> The Moors had control of the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. This is why the United States song of defeated the Moors from the halls of Montezuma, Mexico, to the shores of Tripoli, Africa, confirming in song the extent of the Moorish Empire and the dominion of Maxim or Atlantis. The United States is not a nation or nor is a nationality. 
The United States is of America, but America, Al-Murak, is not of the United States, meaning one has a superior position. Nevertheless, America is a nationality, as well as also a continent. I need all support for all true American citizens of the United States of America. This is what Noble Drali said. Help me to save my people who have fallen from the constitutional law of the government. Divine warning by the prophet from the nations, by prophet Noble Drali. He did not say United States citizen because there is a difference. He said American. All right? So, this goes in the fact that Count Vani, the ruin of empires, all right? And I'll show you that book. The ruin of empires. What? All right, excuse me. I got so many books, I got to, got to retrieve them. All right, so this is the book, The Ruin of Empires by Tom Vaughn. All right, and he speaks about Joe Barlow, American statesman, in which that talked about the Treaty of Tripoli, in which that was written in the articles, in which that stated the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. Of course not. Because um, America was Muslim. <laughs> Muslim. All right? And next week, we're going to go over the real traditions of Islam. Not the Arab traditions. We talk about yoga. <laughs> All right? We talk about the power of yoga. All right, so here, once again, Carolina Genesis Beyond the Color Line, edited by Scott um, Withrow. All right? The Yamasee Indians, the Yamasee refers to as, once again, the Amir Chario, Chario, Amir Chario. So here it is, the Amir, the Amir, the Moors. They have it right there embedded in the word, who they call the Yamasi. The Yamasi was the Moors. Were listed among the 19 tribes as black and being of dark complexion, found it widely scattered among the inhabitants of North and Central, excuse me, of North and South America. So they were descendants of who? The Olmecs, the Olmeca, the She people. They were assumed to be immigrants from Africa prior to the um, European discovery of America, whom Locus, um, Lucas, um, Verquez, the Alion, persisted in slave hunting in Beaufort, South Carolina in 1520. Well, who was that? The Yamas, the Yamasi, were the Gullah people who are still in South Carolina to this day, in Beaufort, South Carolina at that. Elion refers to the Yamasee as Negroes being invaluable laborers. Here's the Black Seminoles right here. Banded in 1870, about 50 in numbers, served as skilled trackers and distinguished themselves in numerous military engagements. Now, these are the labels that they wanted them to do. Four black Seminole Indian scouts received the Congressional Medal of Honor, while the black Seminoles served the nation with honor. The government promised to provide the communities with food and land was never fulfilled. <laughs> Yeah, come on and work for us, man. Come on and do this military thing. We can, you know, hook you up later on. That's that pimping shit. I'm starting to believe that this people <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> that the, 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 um, 
So we all the real talk. I think this fifty shit got to do with that birth certificate and that social security card and that monetary fund money that they trying to take oh, over. Like we gonna pay you. We didn't pay you for the land, but we gonna put you under this contract and we still gonna take money from y'all asses. You know that's how we do. <laughs> we got to do it. We got to be able to. We got to be able to provide for our workers. You know what I mean? You know, those of us that is out here, you know, prostituting themselves in the same way possible. Look, look, this shit is ridiculous. Oh, man, it is, you, man. Yeah, outrageous, man. We got, to, we got to wake up, y'all. Hey, man. Man. Ali, real man. Man. Yes. Where was David McRitchie from? Um, David McRitchie, he was from, um, um, from Monroe, Louisiana. He, I'm out there with the Empress. All right, so how how do you think that we should? Because I mean, I've been looking ever since you said that about two months ago about that book. I've been looking all over, and sometimes I'll be thinking like, how do I get books from over like overseas to say just in case they got it? Which which book you talking about? Uh, United oh, States and Barbie Powers. Oh, that's a good question. We gonna have to dig on um go to England. Get an English um, bookstore and see if they got it up in there or something. Um, I, they on lockdown. Yeah, I, I, I got a book coming from England, but it's, uh, they on lockdown right now. Yeah. Right, yeah. So I'm, I'm finna look up some England bookstores, man, because uh, I'm I'm gonna make sure we got that, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I got a book still coming, you know, uh, but they on lockdown. Right. Yeah. All right. Are there um, any questions before we go? Yes, hey, I have oh, a question. Yes, go ahead. Eve over there, ain't she? Or she in London, right? Who? The rapper Eve. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She over there. Mm-hmm. I'm going to reach out to her. See, what, see what's up. Okay. All right. I have a question, Dr. Alone. You said get the book for teachings of the something of the committee. It was an old book that you had posted up. I was trying to read it, but you ended up moving the slide. Oh, yeah. It's called The Oldest Book in the World. The Oldest Book in the World? Yeah, it's called The Oldest Book in the World. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I go, I go back to it. Let me see if I can get, get there. Who is it by? Um, Asa G. Hilliard. Um, A... A S A, here it is. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. The oldest book in the world. Okay. Mm-hmm. The teachings of Ptahhotep, the oldest book in the world. The teachings of Ptahhotep. And Asa okay. G, is it, um, Asa A S A G Hilliard the third. Where can you get this book? Can you buy it online? Yeah, you can get it from eBay or either um, Amazon. Okay. And also, did you want to still bring up the, about the hemp? Because I did, um, not to get off the subject of what we're talking about, but just to kind of mm-hmm. throw that up, I did send off a, a message to um, the company um, called Killer, uh, which is a biomass manufacturing place that produces him on demand, and then I sent off an email to AG Processing Solution Incorporation, which also um, does the blast fibers and herd fibers from the um, hemp. And so Mr. Andrew, I spoke with him through an email, and he's going to email me back, him and his wife, who are the owners, that processes the hemp that we talked about last week. Okay, good, good. Thank you, thank you. And Queen Mother been doing some research too, and she sent me some information for me to look over. And um, I've been doing some research on the information too. So, yeah, anybody who can do any research on the hemp, as a matter of fact, um, particularly, um, even if we had to use them as a um, as a middleman. We can get start getting products out, and all the chiefs can begin to start getting products that they can sell from out their home instead of some type of business plan for each chief so that um, everyone can be financially stable um, and then be able to open up um, markets and stores 
in the um you know in their own you know places where they are re- you know where they re- you know where they domicile at. Um, I think that probably be the best thing um, to work it that way, and that way nobody um, have any issues, but everybody is growing at the same time. Sounds good. Hey, I got that book you uh, was putting up. Which one? The Infinite Power. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Infinite Power of um, yeah. Um, oh, you got that book? Yeah, it's right here. Well, hold on, I can't, I can't even see it. Okay, where you, where you at? Right here on the camera. Oh, let me, let me. Oh, yeah, there it is. All right, I see your reaches. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That is it. Who is the? Who is that by? The Infinite Power. That book. Because I had it. That's by Shechem Hiru L. Well, by Sheik, I call him Shechem. It's Shechem um, Hiru L. All right, thank you. I, I used I let uh I let Jason uh bust a little turtle gang in the head with this one. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, yeah, cause turtle turtle gang is saying that he's Lenapi. Okay, well you Lenapi, then Lenapi say they more. So what is your problem? Right. Hmm. But see, this is always niggas trying to ostracize something which they think is not connectable. But I'm like, son, when we connect it, it's over. You still trying to debate something is over. <laughs> but strangely to him, right there in Philadelphia, it say the soccer moor, the Shechem of Mexico, Delaware right. Moor. They said, right. said on the monuments right there. Exactly. Exactly. So Still yeah, that's why that's why you can't do anything except try to um, you know, get get rid of um, Jason from off his site. Okay, well you you need to go. <laughs> oh, yeah, block him. I'm gonna so, block him. As soon as, as, as I gave him that uh that article about the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, he blocked him. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, he did. So funny that. So did. So funny that morning. <laughs> yeah. And the crazy thing is that we got a um we got a um site together. I'm like, what what are you doing? What are you doing? Cause you surely can't convert me. Him. You surely can't convert me into that foolishness. <laughs> no, I told them that they flipped them. Yeah. That's what I told them. They they flipped you, man. Oh, yeah. oh, they- I'm looking at the etymology of the word of friend, and friend means enemy. Uh-oh. So when you look at the friendship and treaty of friendship and peace, mm. Mm. enemy and peace, mm. I'm, just to, I'm just curious because, I mean, according to the etymology of friend, it means enemy. Mm. So I know you always stress that we as chiefs look into some detail. So I'm really looking at the details of the etymology of this word, and I'm trying to put that treaty with that word, and that ain't making no sense to me. That's like mm-hmm. saying enemy and peace. That's, that's the plot. As Samir said, that's the plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> that's wow. the plot twist. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what they did. They, they became our enemies quickly. And we was thinking something else. Well, if that's the case, then if we consider friends, that means that everybody that's a friend in the United Nations is an enemy to the United States Incorporation. Yeah, I know we are. (laughs) 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 They ain't gonna lie. (laughs) You got that right. You know, shoot, especially to the ideology. Don't tell me, don't come over with that with that misinformation. That's all I'm saying. 
But um, Ayana, <laughs> um, um, Elliot Bay, she said her um last name um is Turner um as well. So you got you got a cousin right here online, Goddess. Okay, yeah, I'm learning more. I'm like connected to people because um, come to find out, um, when I found out about Mary Davis, which is Sammy Davis Jr.'s mother. That is my my uncle's or my grandfather's first cousin. And so that's where the Turner comes in from the Andrew side of my mother's daddy. Right. So right. I was like, we, we really found out a whole lot. So I'm like overwhelmed with joy at the same time, like nervous, because I'm like, okay, it's people I went to school with, I'm finding out that I'm related to. So it's yeah. almost scary. You don't ever know yeah. who. You know, and back then they did a uh, family reunion. Nowadays yeah. there's no family reunion yeah. to restore the family back so everybody yeah. missing out who they related to. Yep. All yep. you tunicus, huh? Yep. All you all you tunicus. All right. Yeah, the tunicus is in the building. The Royal House yeah. of Tunicus. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> all the tunicus. Yep. I'm a turn it too. What words you looked up to say, Goddess? Goddess, when you looked up friend, I think um, Marisha is asking about, you talking about the f- word friend? T- and what, what, what book she looked it up in? Um... This uh old it's an old Webster dictionary um from the seventeen uh seventeen hundred. Ooh. Where, uh, where a friend is considered enemy. Mm. So I'm gonna have to look it up in the black flaw if there is friend in the black flaw and see what that was in black flaw if it was considered enemy as well. So I'm still researching it, but I just happened to come across it. And when I was looking at what he was reading about the friendship and treaty, that would mean enemy and a peace treaty. So that's what they, according to them, friendship was a was a slick word for uh, enemy. They just didn't let it be known publicly. So when mm-hmm. actually, I guess if you get on Facebook, they're saying enemy on Facebook. So mm-hmm. the, the Facebook is an enemy of ours. So I, I, I kind of understood that anyway because a lot, a lot goes against um, you mm-hmm. as a person, individual. So everything is based on the straw man and uh, everything that we have learned is fictitious, even with their system being fictitious, meaning that we were never friends. We have always been and forever will be enemies according to this etymology of friendship. Well, it's on a, it's on a treaty now. Right. Mm-hmm. On the treaty now, so yeah. Wish, they had, I wish our ancestors don't have that at the time, but <laughs> still exist today too. So it yeah. must be something to it. Yeah. Any other questions or comments before we go? No, no, I mean I'm 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 through. Okay. Hey, hey how she, you uh, she absolutely uh correct because uh the friend that's in uh the 1828 dictionary says uh friend to favor or counter name to be friend to support or aid, but now we use befriend. And that's the same definition in the Black Law Dictionary, fourth edition. Well, yeah, befriend, that's what I'm looking at now. I'm looking it up now, and it says to befriend. Yep. You say, but now wow. we use befriend. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, that's amazing. So when we take thinking that the words mean something else, it means something totally different or the opposite. Yep. That's yep, right. like I say it's on, it's on the treaty now. The longest treaty in the world. Yep. So, yeah. 
Friendship. Friendship means animal appetite. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> but be friends. But be uh, friends. You said be friends before. So we, we, what, we, what is we, it? We uh, I'm at 1828 Western Dictionary. Which was which, which, which we gonna go? Which, which one are we gonna go by now? Be friend, uh, Frenchman, animal. Uh, what, 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 okay, what we gonna go by? Cause it's on the treaty now. Wow, it's on the treaty. So, uh, maybe that's not what they meant. I don't know. Friendly, disposed to peace. Goodness gracious. That's, yeah, but that's on the treaty. Yeah. So, so what's it going to do? Send me the link uh, next what, what you going to do? Which one, which, which one you want? Send me all the ones that's crazy. <laughs> 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 let me go to friend first. Hold on, let me get to the camera. I'm going to send you friend. Uh, We're going to go down the line. Hold on, friend. Hold on. Let me, uh, we want to put that in the chat. Yeah. Hold on. On oh, there. Hold up. If I find any um, in the older dictionary, I don't need my city to you. Okay. But this just had me like overwhelmed with different words that I'm seeing now. Um, what that, what the real etymology of the word is being used when we yeah. say it. Yeah, that's why we got to break the spell. Yeah, that's why I don't say morning, because I tell people all the time, it's not good morning, grand rising, because I'm not morning, and you ain't going to wish nothing bad on my family. Exactly. Right. And that's how we were tricked with so many of the treaties. We allowed them to write them in their language and not ours. You know, our understanding of a word was not what they meant. Right. The other part of it is written in uh, Arabic, I think. Uh, friend, one in well, English and one in Arabic. All right, we got to go to a noun. The noun is uh, is a particular uh, of a free eye to free, to love, contracted. But the verb in friend is to be friend. Well... Depends on what you want to go by, who, I mean, what, you know. Like I say, it's on a treaty. Although it's on, although it's on the treaty, we have to think about, that That makes plenty of sense why they put friend and, and friend on the treaty because they're saying our enemy, we will be at peace with. So we're going to trick them and tell them that they are our friends to do this peace agreement as a treaty, but then they still defaulted on the treaty, and so therefore the treaty was never validated, which puts us back in the state of where we were, which makes us still an aborigine to the land, which they never paid for in the beginning. So it was default, so they connived mm-hmm. us and we connived their ass. So it, it, it gets way hand in hand. That's how I look at it. Well, That's exactly right. Uh, Right. Yeah, but again, another part of that treaty that's in Arabic. So I wish somebody who knew Arabic, you know, could read it. Well, I do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Arabic and Hebrew. And I do Hebrew. I'm still learning mm-hmm. Arabic. Arabic is kind of hard. It's harder than Hebrew to me. Okay, that treaty still stands. So it must be something, like I said, it must be something for the European to want to know. Because uh, right. if they don't stand, if, if that's what it means, then they got to get out. Right. They're the ones got to get out, not us. Right. right. Now, if that's what it means, enemy or, 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 or that, uh, sister, uh, they got to get out of here. Yeah, and if they said that, excuse my French, they fucked themselves. They didn't yeah. fuck us, they fucked themselves. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> so, they really got them. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. 
<laughs> yep. And I mean, they fucked themselves and big time. Yeah, I sent it to your inbox, Aline, because uh, you wouldn't let me send it in the chat. Okay. Let me see. It's both from the bottom one, uh, from the Black Law Dictionary, and the other one is from uh, the verb from uh, the 1828 Northwest American Dictionary of Language. Okay. I got a college uh, unabridged. What's that? Uh, a random house college student. Look that up there. It's a later one. It's a later one. Yes, as where to be friends before hmm. nine hundred Middle English. Right. Well, yeah. Be friend means friend. So I, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I you know. <laughs> uh, like if they did, like I said, if they did write some funny in there, they fucked themselves. Oh. Yep. And you know how they train. Stuff, <laughs> but that would be Don't a good thing, though. The laugh would be on them. Yeah. That would be a good thing, though. Huh? Oh, yeah. What's that, Arlene? And this is a uh, 1966 uh, Random House College Dictionary that I got the other definition from. Okay, be friend. Okay. Well, yeah, say, just say be friend. Well, be friend means uh, be friend to somebody. Right, that's another term that they use to make us think it was something good when it was really nothing good at all. It was really but, but, that but was they're good. good. But for, uh, for their sake, it better it, it better mean be friends, cause uh, if it don't, and we find out that it done, we have more. We find out it don't. Well, guess we have to leave. Now you get the yeah. turn when we when you become conscious. You say I got associates, I ain't got no friends. I ain't mirror. got no friends exactly, cause friends mean enemy. So therefore, with a guy being associate, then that's why you know that you can never be a friend, which makes this guy. They defaulted on so many people. They didn't keep, it, keep their word. Any time a person don't keep their word or a group of nations that don't keep their word, which has everything to do against you as a people, then how can you call them a friend anyway? I will call them an enemy too. But, but well, they fucked themselves. Well, they got to get out. Well, that, that's a good thing. Nobody Ali already said, um, Moors, y'all are home. Your penis is going to have to carry 3,000 miles from water, so. Exactly. Right. <laughs> well, he said you need to be again. Be up, up here in, Me- in Chicago and, and Detroit and all of that shit. Mecca's going to have to rise back up. And this time, we're going to have to push them out by force. I guess, I guess the way that they force us, we got to force them out. Yeah. The thing about it is we're going to have some of the Negro, the Negroes do it. Right. Uh, man, uh, I forget the word, but it's something like, they're halito, like hello. Halito? Yeah, halito. But it's something in the uh, Choctaw Dictionary, it means whore. I was like, whoa, hold on, let me see if the page just. Say that again, brother. It means what? Hold on. 
I'm trying to find it. And it gives you reference in the diction, mean, uh, in the Bible where it means whore. Really? Not holy whore. Whore. Not holy whore. No, not holy whore. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's something close to it, though. Oh, no. <laughs> really? You know, and I'm like, whoa. Right, right. Well, I got to, to do something, so. Hey, hard to watch the Tar East family. Yeah, yeah, to watch Tar East for now. All right. I'll be calling you, Dr. Ali. All right. Washita East. Yeah, Washita East. Aline Bay, I have a few questions. Yes, go ahead. Uh, my government name is Guy. I just uh, got my nationality. Yeah, peace, brother. Process. Yeah. Peace, peace, peace. And um, I just put in my uh, Social Security papers and everything, and I'm great the next step with my job and I was just wondering uh, when I turn in to my job how does that affect the uh, my benefits or is that canceled or or get it how I live I, I just didn't know the processes of that you know like I said I'm just starting out and I do want to learn more but I you know I just want to know the proper steps that I do not I'm unaware of. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, calling Miss <clears throat> Kadira, and uh, she was telling me to just uh, be patient and uh, wait to the next class and ask you. Right. So um, for your job, it's up to you. You have, have you put your documents on the public record? Yes, I had uh, paid for my nationality and for y'all to do the process for me. Extra. Okay. All right. So, so your document has been put on the public record. Um, actually, you don't have to do anything else from here on. All right. However, if you want to operate in your indigenous appellation, then what you would do is go down to the Social Security Department and tell them that you had a name change. Even though we call it a common law name correction, you would tell them that you had a name change and you would show them the one sheet of paper that they need to see, which is the one with the black lines on it, on the black outlines, which is called the common law name correction. You would show them that sheet, that one sheet. It would make a copy and then they would give you a card within seven to 10 days. You don't have to wait, though. They were also going to give you a sheet of paper in which they verify that you have a new car coming. You can take that sheet of the new car coming from the Social Security place and that one sheet that you have from out of your documentation, which is common law name correction, and then you can go down from the Social Security place, you can go down to the DMV. Once you go down to the DMV, you can get an ID card a state ID card, all right, in which that verifies, um, um, and it will be under your indigenous appellation. And even though it's in all caps, it doesn't matter because you don't have a birth certificate with your indigenous appellation, all right? You don't have a birth certificate with your indigenous appellation. Therefore, um, anything which that you do actually is, is invalid as far as um, everything is predicated on the birth certificate. You don't have a birth certificate in your indigenous appellation. So therefore you are operating freely in commerce for the first time in your entire life. Yes, sir. I, um, I did the process of the social security. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I showed them that paper and um, they made a copy and gave it back to me. And they mm -hmm. told me that they would be mailing me. And I also gave my papers for my daughters as well. Okay. And, and um, they said that they would be mailing it back to me. So then uh, I was going to take the tax exempt papers to my job, but I was right. just wanting. No, uh, you don't. You don't. Don't take it yet until you get your documents back from the. Now you need to go to the DMV and do it. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So when I go to the DMV, I just take that paper that I received back from the Social Security. Right. The paper that you get from the Social Security and 
Um, you would take that information right back. Yup. Okay. And my next question, as far as my banking status, um, how how would I handle my money? Because I get direct deposit. Do I count? You would go to the you would go to the bank and show them the, the same exact forms. Right. You would go to a bank once you got your common law name correction. Which that sheet that that you showed, you show them that you show them your social security card and you show them your ID, your state ID. Once you got those, then you can go to the bank and then you can put transfer everything over from um from um Guy um Britson yeah. to your indigenous appellation. Okay. Now, uh, and, then, my, and then you can go to then you can then you know the same thing. You can go to your job and take those same documents and tell them that you had the name changed, and then you have to do a new W four form. All right, we recommend doing a W eight or W A B E N. Um, and you can do um, a new form in which that you would put on there that you are exempt from taxes. So within two weeks, you will no longer have state taxes taken out, no longer will have federal taxes taken out. So you said I need to get a WA form? Eight, as in the eight. letter eight, as in the numeral eight. Yep, W8 form. So it's not a W2, okay. No. Okay. W2 form. And where can I um, get the W8 form, sir? Right offline, or either call the Social Security. Okay. Um, and what I have another question about child support. Mm hmm How do I handle? I don't know the processes of handling that. Well, that's that's another procedure too. Oh um, God. Um, you have to learn the UCC process, um, in which that that deals with a lot of information as far as the contracts that you need. And then, um, so that's a whole nother procedure once you get to that. And it's okay. tedious. I, I've done it. I've done, um, just keep listening in class and I'll go over that again. I've done, I've done breakdowns of that information before, but we're going to have to get back to it. Um, probably next Sunday, I'll probably go back to that information. Okay. And, uh, about schooling for my children that, they're home with me. I get them 50 cent at the time, but I'm you know, in the online schooling, and I wanted to get the correct schooling for them. And you I was mean, wondering how to process like a it. curriculum? Yes, yes. Like, I really want to take them out of the JCPS where I'm at and put them in schooling to get the proper knowledge. Right. And I was wondering, did y'all have online classes? No, we don't have online classes, but we do have um, a curriculum. Okay. In which that we, in which that we can um, send. Okay. Okay. That sounds. Uh, how do I? How do I apply for that? Do I go on your website? Um, yeah, you just go through the information, go on the website, and then just put in, you know, um, what you, you know, what you're asking for and everything. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think I got it, but, uh, I think I just need to <laughs> calm down because I'm just trying to make sure I get everything from you and do it right. So I can get it together and uh, so I can be prepared for, you know, what's to come. Right. And as far as the, uh, like I just want to have all my, my I want to obtain the knowledge so that I know so I won't, you know, be not knowing anything. But, you know, I don't, I can't speak that lane, but uh, at, um, I got your vaccine exemption papers as well, so I'm filling them out. Okay. So I'm just trying to get it all together, um, Dr. Arlene. That's all I'm trying to get it together. Man, I understand, brother. Definitely. Yeah. 
Okay, okay, all right. But you say the next step is to get my WA form and fill it out? Well, the next step is, once again, is to go down to the DMV and get a state ID. DMV, get a state ID. Right. You got to have your letter from the Social Security, and you got to have your um, letter, um, you know, your affidavit coming on that correction form. Those two things will get you your state ID. Once you got your state ID, then you can go to the bank, you can go to your um, job, you can do everything after that. But okay, you can't my, do none of that unless you yours. Okay, so I need to get my state ID with my Appalachian name, correct? Right. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take care of that and we'll see each other next week. Is this the only time you have classes is on Sunday? No, we have classes also on Wednesdays. Wednesdays. And what time is that? Dr. Um, six o'clock. Well, okay, then. Uh, I appreciate the help. All right. Please, Grandma. Please, Dr. Lee. Yes. Oh, Wednesday, you said it's 6 o'clock. Is it on here? Yes, it's on the same, yep, on the same line here. Yep, 6 okay. o'clock on Wednesday. Okay, then. Okay. I'll, be I'll try to join you next Wednesday if I have the time allotted. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that. I'd have been on there. <laughs> Me too. Well, everybody that now knows, come on. No problem, yeah. man. Shame on you, Eileen, for not telling us. <laughs> <laughs> every, every, every Wednesday, 6 o'clock. Every All Wednesday, right. 6 o'clock. I'll see you Wednesday. Peace and love for every soul. Peace and love. Peace and love, God. All right. All right. I have to watch the Oh, come on, come on. Oh, where my shit's at?